Hey Hoarders fans, I'm Dorothy the organizer from Hoarders. You know, my gig on the show is to encourage and lead our hoarders and their families to clear out and organize their homes. Well, fingers crossed on that one, right? We've put together some of my most memorable cleanups for you to binge, and I hope you enjoy. So please stick around for my personal take on each episode. I want you to understand. I want it, and I did not agree to bring it out here. What is it that you want? I was called here because you two are on the verge of a divorce. And you're shooting the You have time for that. I've had it. Okay. I said be careful. They've locked their house. They can't do the work. There might not be a project here. Oh, no. It doesn't make sense. I know a lot of things don't make sense to you. It seems like he's right on the edge of losing control. Big jobs. I got to go fast know, after all know, these items. Hold on, buddy. You know, I feel like, what the f are you doing? What is the matter with you? Look at this shit. I'm BG, and I'm retired, and I'm the wife of Lee. I'm Lee, and I'm BG's husband. This house is over 100 years old. It's elaborate. It's a beautiful house to begin with because it's Victorian. It's Queen Anne style. People on the outside don't know we have a long ways to go on the inside. I'm Laura, and BG and Lee are my parents. Their house is just things everywhere. Once you're through the door, it's just overwhelming. Well, I know that I didn't have things that I might have wanted when I was growing up. That set me off on a pattern of trying to get those things and trying to make sure my kids had those things. I'm not a person who's adverse to shopping. I like a good bargain. I'm a good shopper. When you can get things for a quarter, sometimes you'll get a lot more than if you had to pay $5. Christmas things. Well, I can get this one, I can get them all. And even people will say stuff like, take the whole box for $2. And of course I will. I think everything is in there. I think they could have a store. Nothing like this happens overnight. Over the years, my mom didn't want to get rid of things, and he didn't feel like he could get rid of things that she didn't want to get rid of. Where are you taking that? And there was this um, tension there. We bought too much stuff. I would say that probably the last 10 years is when the balance tipped. Pretty much everything we do, it's a problem. I mean, we get hurt around the house. I think I've got eight broken toes out of 10. So the climbing over things is not helping me. Oh, my current relationship with Lee is, 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 is not good. We are legally separated. It's an untenable situation. Yeah, there's a lot of friction. I feel that he sabotages whatever I do. My wife has a certain number of axes to grind. Oh, that was a nice thing to say, <clears throat> as usual. And is very good at grinding them. Lee has 99.99% .99 control. He's a complete control freak. Yeah, hold this. Here. No, dump him in. He actually boarded up every doorway. I think that there is a long history of disagreements. Oh, he goes crazy if you touch anything. He goes completely crazy. I want to get rid of this. She wants to get rid of that. Impasse. That's a significant issue if you have two strong personalities. If I touch him, he goes insane. And as a matter of fact, he, he likes to actually blame me for touching things that I don't even touch. We had a big fight. She did file for divorce. 
I intended to be married until I die. A divorce was never part of anything I would consider. She doesn't understand divorce. She doesn't understand community property. She doesn't understand any of that. I'm not happy living in this situation. We are financially bound to the house, and I cannot leave and he cannot leave. There's no ability for one person to go somewhere and live somewhere else because the person who's remaining cannot pay for the house. If we get a divorce, whatever financial planning I was able to do, it'll screw it up. Yes, I would say there is a crisis. I think if we don't get this mess cleaned up, that it's gonna destroy me and or it will destroy Lee. My name is Chris, and I have a full-time job driving a tow truck. People have told me that I'm not a regular, everyday guy because I'm a little excessive in wanting to cling to what I find uh, comforting or pleasant. So I tend to hoard a lot of things. I'm coming to the viewpoint that my home is cluttered, unusually cluttered unpleasantly cluttered. I'm Rochelle, and Chris is my neighbor. Chris is very unusual. His mind just doesn't think the way normal people think, so there's no rhyme or reason to the house. And Chris sleeps in a sleeping bag on the floor right there between the boxes. Most of the stuff he hoards is stuff that he finds on the street. Oftentimes, my eyes dart over to the garbage can, and there's something interesting, something uh, electrical or mechanical sticking out of it. I just want to go home and take it apart and see how it works and enjoy that process of discovery. He's spending probably between fifteen and $19,000 a year on storage units. My storage units are somewhat problematic because uh, the expenditure exceeds my monthly income. Chris is in serious financial difficulty with his credit cards, with owing the IRS. I'm dimly aware that this spending pattern is not sustainable. He's on a path of destruction. I'm Caitlin, and Chris is my brother. As kids growing up, Chris was a little bit different than everyone else. He always struggled with meeting people and interacting with people. He enjoyed electronics. I remember his room being full of whatever he was building, gadgets. I'm Gail, and Chris is my brother. I thought of him as very smart. But I certainly think that there's some really big Swiss cheese holes that he's got. I have to admit, I feel pretty worried. Within the last few months, he's let little hints out in conversations about struggling with finance. I get worried about the money, and then I try to cut down on my out-of-pocket expenses in my daily life told me that he pulled the plug from his refrigerator. And I said, why? He said, well, because it costs electricity. I belong to a chain of fitness gyms, and sometimes I go to the gym and uh, use their shower to maintain uh, my uh, personal hygiene. I said, Chris, this is crazy. It costs more to join the health club on a monthly basis than to pay for electricity at your apartment. I was trying to stay away from home for periods of time and, and ex experiencing that. Because if I was not paying rent on the apartment, then I would be able to stay within my income level. But after an extended period of being out on the street, my experiment ended in failure because I have this strong 
wish to be safe and uh, protected. Something's not quite right in his mind with the way he hoards and what he thinks. He hasn't fixed it. He won't let me help him. I don't know what will happen. The worlds are going to collide if I don't do something about it. I'm BG. BG, nice to meet you. I'm Lee. Lee. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. I'm Dr. Robin Zazio. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and I specialize in OCD and compulsive hoarding. So, what do you think? I think there's a lot of stuff here. It's all sideways from here on out. Yes, ma'am. My first impression of Lee and Bee Gee's house was complete overwhelm. This would be your dining room. It is. It has is. not been used for about three years. Well, not us. I've been in a lot of houses. I don't think I've ever been in a house this tightly packed with stuff. This house is not safe. Oh my gosh. Careful. It's clear that there are some pretty strong issues in this marriage and relationship. Are you guys having financial problems? We're not having, we have enough income to cover living and regular stuff. We do not have enough to take on major projects. The only reason why I ask is because you're wanting to sell things to recoup some of the money. We know we can recoup a lot of money from a lot of the things that we purchased. I think where we're gonna get into trouble is if we go into this thinking that we're gonna categorize and sell, we're not gonna get anywhere. You're gonna have to decide, do you wanna take our help to get your house in order in the moment and let stuff go in the moment or if the plan is to sell them, we're gonna leave and this house is gonna be in the exact same state. I reached overload a while back, just so you know, but I want my money back. I'm worried. I think there's a possibility of World War III when they see people in the home touching their stuff. I'm Dorothy Brenninger. I'm a professional organizing expert, and I specialize in hoarding. We're here. We're ready to go. I've got 20 people. Go, go, go. It's brand new, and look at it now. It's got a thing on it. It was pushed and shoved. We need to set some standards. We've got the house locked now. We need to get something straight because I'm not going to glue and replace everything I own. We haven't even started yet, and they're telling us that things are broken. We'll be careful of this, and the guy's here. I come back, and then this is destroyed. We've been working, what, 15 minutes maybe, and the whole process is stopped. I've had it. I've said be careful. They've locked their house. We can't get in. We can't do the work. There might not be a project here. Dr. Chabot. Hello. Yes, could you open the door? Oh, hey, Hi. Chris. I'm Dr. Suzanne Chabot, and I specialize in compulsive hoarding. Hi. Oh, hi. I don't think I can get through, though. Oh, you're pretty thin. I could barely get inside the house. My first thought was, he really didn't want people to come inside his house. But there's a mixed message. Chris really wants to be with people but he doesn't really prepare himself for welcoming people into his life. Do you have any people in the house? No. Would you like to have people in the house? Yeah, I like having you in the house, just 
nice yeah. having you here and it's smiling nice. at me in a friendly way. It's, it feels it feels good. Yeah. I think it would be nice for you to have some company. Uh, yeah, maybe under different circumstances. That's right. Yeah. The truth is, Chris is a very lonely person who really wants human contact. Now he's letting people enter this world. The bottom line is here. It's either you, Chris, or it's your objects. My name's Corey Chalmers. I'm an extreme cleaner specializing in biohazard and hoarding. Dr. Chabot and I have a lot of work cut out for us because Chris is a very fragile, sensitive man. And if we push him too hard, he's gonna break. I wasn't prepared for what I saw in the house. It was pretty overwhelming. I don't even know how he can survive in a place like that. This is a different way of life than I ever imagined. That's my apartment. This is your apartment. I can't condone this kind of living. I don't feel like it's healthy. I mean, frankly, Chris, if you would die right now, who's gonna pick up the <laughs> Caitlin lives away, it's gonna be me. I'm gonna be the one that has to deal with it. <laughs> Personally, I feel like I've bent over backwards to try to hold myself in check and be kind and be gentle and be understanding. And it's really hard, Chris. It's really hard. Maybe it's, that's what I'm sensing. Because I'm sensing it's like something's it's, boiling, but then it's, yeah. it's being held back, and, and I'm worried about it. Yeah, what's well, behind I feel like I could blow up. I feel like I want to strangle you. Uh -huh. You know, I feel like, what the f are you doing? Yeah. Maybe. You know? Yeah. Look at the What is the matter with you? Damn it. This is ridiculous. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the marathon. Are you? Don't forget to watch Hoarders on Sundays at 7 a.m. Eastern on A&E. Oh, and if you're interested in becoming a professional organizer like me, just visit www.bossorganizer.com and come to my free web class. I'm not gonna play that game. Hey, I've had okay, it, I've said be careful. So here's the deal. Lee and BG have locked the house completely. Solid. Do you want to keep this? No. Bye-bye for that. Excellent. Bye-bye. This, this can go. It's a small, but I don't think I'm going to get rid of the gigantic one yet. Concrete goes. Steel stays. Unless they pull it out for trash, we're just moving most of this as close to the patio as possible, because I want all this clear, yeah? I'm done with this. How about you? I'm really not done with it. If I get forced into it, it's going to go. But there's no other vehicle that does that without pedaling. You ruined that one from the very start. That was a beautiful one and you had to put a bunch of crap on it, then you'll never find a blue huge radio flyer again. How about one of the slides? You've got two slides. How about one of the slides? No. Okay. What's with the telephone booth? It's gone. I don't think I can part with it yet. The plan was to get some room in the backyard as a sorting station. Everything back to here goes. And yes, we have filled up 3 quarters of a truck, which is great. But there is still so much stuff back there. Do you want to get yes. rid of it? Yes, if we can find it. God. I want to get clear on how difficult it is for you to go through these, what you're keeping, what you're not. I don't know yet. This I would either keep because of the colors and the style for me, but I'd have to try it on. If it's too small, it's going. Well, what's the deal? You want to try it on? Can't give it up yet. Can't. It's me, it's me. I don't know what to tell you. Bye bye, P bad purchase. These, These are, are keeps. keeps. Uh, they can both go. History. Is it? 
I wish you wouldn't answer for my clothes. I really do. What is that, anyway? What is what? He answers for you a lot. Yes, and he talks trying, before I can talk. Give me a second. Yeah, give me a second. And he interrupts everything I say. What is it that you want? We're going to clear this space so that we can clear that upstairs area, yes? Am I making two living rooms and two kitchens? Or am I making one living room and one kitchen? I don't know what we're doing here. I was called here because you two are on the verge of a divorce. Whenever I try to talk about what's really going on, there's a diversion technique that comes in. First of all, BG tries to answer it, and she's told to shut up. OK, then Lee comes in and says the rest. You're this wrong. Is wrong? You are misinformed. We are drowning in stuff. And that's what we need to work on. The goal is to get in the house. We've, this has all got to go, basically. We got books, videos, DVDs, CDs, etc. These are categories of things we're going to keep. Well, that's pretty much everything that we just it's took everything. out. I, and, I, and... I loaded it in here. I know what it is and where. OK, what. so Lee, but listen what I'm saying. How are we making room for stuff if all we've done is take it out, and then tonight we've got to bring it back in again? I can make space in there, I can move it around, uh, but we're not doing them the service of helping them with their hoarding issues. No, and this is probably the first time that I have really felt strongly that all we're doing is making more room for them to bring in more stuff. They, they've got it bad. They've got it really, really bad. I feel like I could blow up. I feel like I want to strangle you. Uh -huh. You know, I feel like, what the are you doing? Yeah. Maybe. You know? Look at <sighs> Let's tune into your sister right now and try to really read where she's at. Are you sensing just the judgment and the criticism and the high demands? What are you seeing in her face? I, I think she's disappointed that I haven't done better. I want you to be happy. <laughs> I think you and Gail have more in common than you think. I think both of y'all really want safety and peace and happiness and protection. And it's really painful when other people don't get it for themselves. So you want to do one item at a time and see either yes or no? That would work for me. Would that work for you? Just picking it up once and making a decision? Yeah, that's that's an intelligent way to do it. Chris, are you getting upset? Well, it, it's it, it's just a process that has to be done. I I, I don't know what okay, to but say. Talk I mean, to me. No, take, take a second. We're just starting to go through the beginning items in the kitchen, and Chris is already showing extreme agitation. You seem like you're throwing things out of anger now, and I want to make sure that you're not throwing away things that you really do want. Gail, my sister, is upset, and I, I'm trying to alleviate her suffering. I don't, I'm trying to cooperate. Chris is in a really intense state right now. He has the sense that if something is going to be done, he has to do it, and he has to do it really fast. If you disengage from this process and just toss stuff without talking through it and understanding why and all the emotion involved, you're not going to learn anything from it. Okay. So how would you like people to hand it to you? As if we can do it non-verbally, it'll be a lot easier for me. We can't do it non-verbally. We have to know what the answer is. But then the answer is right here in my fingers. And I said, oh, Let me just make one thing clear. If you are going to go through every single item, every single box, every single envelope, we won't get done. I don't know how I'm going to sort it unless I look at it. Well, you don't need to. That's the thing. You need to let your sisters make decisions on your behalf. Yeah, but they don't know what I want. That's the only problem. Chris is single focus. If the job needs to be done, he's going to do it. He really doesn't trust other people to handle his own stuff. We're saving all your CDs, all your computer stuff, any piece of paper that has something written on uh -huh. at all. Uh -huh. It's hard to be around him. 
he does not listen. Bert, Chris, could you can stop, you for stop working and talk and to me? The big jobs. I got to go fast. Know, path through I all know, these items. Ah, this okay. is what this is the thing I was looking for. What I'm saying is that. Hold on, buddy. Chris is so intense and so hyper. So could you just stop and come see what they have done? It seems like he's right on the edge of losing control. Stop, 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 stop. You I'm, can't I'm, focus I'm, if you're, I'm, if I'm you're really touching coming. stuff. If you have a lot of stuff in your yard, your porch, your patio, there is one super quick way to change it from looking like a mound of clutter to a seemingly acceptable space. It's called precision placement. Simply take all the items and group them together. Shovels and brooms, patio furniture, potting plants, bikes, and just group them together like with like and with precision placement, of course. Now, number one, make sure everything is upright, not lying down. So get those bikes, pots, and shovels upright. Number two, have all the bikes, the scooters, everything lined up next to each other and facing in the same direction. Number three, push all the chairs back in underneath the patio table and pick up any trash. It's all the same stuff. It's just placed with precision. People like your neighbors are willing to overlook a cluttered backyard if it is at least organized. Dorothy, are you in here? I have to lock that. I have explicit instructions. <sighs> well, so. they can't, we can't lock them out of the house. But they're not to be in here without him. <sighs> I'm, I'm just telling you what I'm told. I'm not. No, no, I I'm understand. I'm not going I, I against it. I understand. Lee? Yes? We can't get stuff out of the house if the front door is locked. We can't have the front door locked because we it. can't get in and out. We're trying to do a service for you. You've got to give us a little bit. You want to sell stuff. You've been talking about doing a yard sale. Well, guess what? If you choose to say yes, I have an entire team who's ready to post signs right now. Can they sell it? And they can sell it for you. It works for me. Oh my god, I don't believe it! No way! Woo! But at the end of the day, we want to know whether it's really selling. If it's not, then you need to come clear that yard sales aren't the way for you. Donate free. What would you? Free. Okay. You think you could take the trampoline with you? If I come back, go ahead, take a spin on it. It'll be great. Okay. <laughs> For all these years, Lee's been talking about having a yard sale. And this is his long plan that he's had forever. And this was going to be the reason why they've got the hoard, because he's ready for the yard sale. He's not at the yard sale. He's not even there. And then every once in a while, he appears and takes something back out and puts it back in the yard. Not a very good yard sailor. <laughs> If it's on the sidewalk, clearly you guys don't want it if you were going to sell it or give it away for free. So at this point, can I'm we surprised. put it on the truck, give it to someone who can use it, rather than repack it up and put it in a box again? Before we do that, we would both like to glance because a, a number of things showed up that we didn't know were there. Okay, and I go. just want to make sure that. Five minutes. Yeah. Oh, I was looking for this. Darn it. <laughs> What's this? That's our stuff. Paper. This pink is yours? Yeah. Oh, okay. And this? Yeah, that's okay. Amber's tape. It's all right. We have the same thing. It's okay. You can keep your stuff. You can't have ours. <laughs> I don't want to have yours. I have enough. Thank you. I'm not sure what these are. I, ha I haven't looked at them. You're taking up some of my five minutes. I mm -hmm. put, I Hurry up. I like it for the third time, and I want it, and I did not agree to bring it out here, and I don't know why it's here. Do you want to sell this? He wants to sell everything he can sell. 
You're struggling here. Let's stop struggling and let's get rid of some stuff. Come oh on. Oh my God. I never saw it come in and I didn't want so it in. So daughter has a choice to come and get it? Right. Is that right? She wants to come and get it. And does and she you live? will take it apart and carry it all the way to her house, which we all know. Okay. You're upset about the kids. There's something with the kids. This man won't let you talk about it. I'm not allowed to talk, period. <clears throat> well, why the hell aren't you allowed to talk about anything? Are you not grown up? I want you to understand that any and everything you say will be on the internet. Good, I don't care, I don't care. I feel for BG. She's really unhappy. She truly feels her entire family hates her. Lee works against me on each thing, and he works with them, and now they all work against me. At the end of the day, they have no interest in living together. Well, I can't do it anymore. I want to have some peace and quiet. I want to have a nice life. At this point, they are going to need intensive therapy to salvage not only this marriage, but this family. It is an extreme crisis. So could you just stop and come see what they have done? Stop, 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 stop. I'm, you I'm, can't I'm, focus I'm, if you're, if I'm really you're touching polite. stuff. Just take a deep breath. Can you please stop and focus? Please, I want to make sure we're on the same plan. So we're at the end of day one, and he's basically not giving up any control. He has to go through every single box. We have to have a house that he can live in that's safe and functional, but we also have to clear storage units so he will have that money to spend on rent and utilities. So we have the house and all these storage units, and one day to finish it off. This is everything that was loaded up. You have basically a whole other apartment size worth of stuff in here. And this is costing you $7,200 a year. How many years have you had it? Yeah, decades. One decade, that's $72,000. Wow. And you have five more of these still to go. If you look, think of $72,000 and how long it takes you to make that much money. Would you give someone $72,000 for what you want to keep out of there? I don't know. I don't know what's in there. Well, let's, 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 let's go. see what it is. Let's, let's see what it is, yeah. Here, Chris, come down here. Just go right on the edge, and then you can just drop it in the trash if you don't want it. Okay, please. I got plenty of help, Corey. It doesn't make sense. Everyone's having to touch I know a lot twice. of things don't make sense to you. Why can't you just slide down here, Chris? If Chris lays out the program, he's fine. Once we take over and say, this is how we want you to do it, he's going to put up a wall, and then anybody outside of that wall is an enemy. Can you put the box at the end of the table, please, Chris? Please. Just so this guy can, Just, can, we can come. We can get more boxes out here and you can I don't need more bag. boxes at a time. I need one box at a time and then I can do it most efficiently. But if I'm talking to you, I can't work. Maybe what you can do is we can ask if we can go in and you can just look real quick and then just say, call, call it out. If we can get rid of it, you save 200 bucks. The answer is no. We're at the end of the line. This is taking away his life, taking away his money. Storage is like death for him. OK, welcome, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. OK, first things first. We're not here to do garage sales or yard sales. That's the first time in history that we've ever done that. What we were trying to actually do was to prove a point that most of your stuff was not stuff that people were going to purchase. It was a seven-hour yard sale. We had 93 customers. We sold 
virtually nothing. Going forward, we want to give you a living room today that you can host your grandkids in, trick-or-treating, whatever is coming you up. You want to do that, and I do know that, and I do appreciate okay. that. Works for all of us. Perfect. Really You're shooting the <laughs> You have time for that. God. I told you how many times? A thousand? You need to deal with your stuff because you're going to complain all night and I'm going to have to listen to it. Listen to me now. Yes. These are the ones you said you were keeping. Do you have to keep those? You got to deal with this, OK? We've had five fights in the last hour because he won't help me. First, this has been a problem for 40 years. It was in our son's room. I wanted it to get gone. He takes something like this and puts it in my hallway. Then he puts boxes on it, then he puts more boxes on it, and then furniture and boxes and furniture and boxes. Nothing goes where it belongs, so, and then nothing makes sense, and you can't get to anything. That's correct. I want this out, I want this out. And he knows, I've just argued with him for an hour. He won't touch anything, but he wants to keep the stuff. I can't get any help. Hey, well, help okay, well, Okay, oh no. I'm talking with her, and she almost hauls off and smacks him one. I always tell people, this stuff in your home is covering up deeper psychological issues. Once there's actual room for the two of you to move and walk around, all of the issues are going to come up. I want this out. I want this out. No, I'm not going to shh. I'm not going to shh. I'm getting sick of saying it. They're going to box in. Okay. No, they're not. They're gone. Okay, they're BG. not. BG. BG. When my wife gets upset, she's liable to say anything. These two items don't go out of this house in one hour. I'm gone. When I ask my mate for help, he doesn't give it to me. When I really need it and want it, he doesn't give it to me. I mean, how much of that can one person take? My wife and I will be fine. Lee and BG should have gotten rid of at least 15 truckloads worth of stuff. They got rid of two. We cleared the stairways, we cleared the hallway, so that if there's a fire, they actually can get the fire department in here. That was my mission. Anything beyond that was like, woohoo! And just so happened we gave them a living room back. And it's beautiful. Let's go into a living room where you could have some holidays and family. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Good job. I'm I'm really concerned. I think it's great that we cleared a room, but that's all we did. All we did was move all your stuff downstairs. We really didn't do anything for you. I, I feel you did. I appreciate that. My concern is, is that you guys are still sticking to your stuff. You're not letting it go. On top of that, there is so much tension in this relationship between the two of you. And even though we've cleared a space, it's also cleared a space for the two of you to argue more, to bicker more, and to get into the issues more. So it's gonna be critical that you follow up with some therapy because you guys aren't gonna survive it. I hope that you guys can make a commitment to keep this space off limits to any box. Well, I do need to put back in the living room whatever belongs in the living room that's in the yard. Dr. Okay. Zazio, I call it a clutter-free zone. Yeah. I'm certain that there's going to be a piece of, a couple pieces of furniture to go back in there. Yeah, it's pretty barren. The hallway and the stairs yes. must not have a stitch on it. The hallway looks very lonely and, you know, just, you know, not happening. You put one thing down, it it's like it breeds another and breeds another. I am really worried about Lee and BG. If they don't follow through with aftercare services, it's only a matter of time before they bring in more stuff because they don't have any insight. I don't believe that they're going to be successful. This is what we're stuck with. Uh huh. So Your landlord is not going to let this stay here. Now I have to find the boxes that I haven't looked at yet, and that's effort. Let the guys I understand do the you're frustrated, work. but I'm not trying to sabotage you. I'm not trying to change the plan. 
I'm just trying to address what's left to do in the short amount of time we have to do it. Chris, seriously, like, please. I really want you to think, what will my home say about me? And more importantly, what will your home say about you to you, to you? I've been very patient with Chris, trying to find his language. But now it's time to speak my language to Chris. And my language to Chris is a deep part of me believes that you are worth more than what you've been doing with your life. I just think that you're ready to, to come out, you know, ready to join life again and to be a more alive, current, current person. Uh -huh. that, that just happened to be an easy box. Maybe you just to make better choices. You ever thought of that? Maybe just getting good at this. But you got a good momentum going, Chris. Chris, you're in a zone. It's me and Rochelle, we're, we got our thing going here. Yeah, we have good. the assembly line, see? It, it works. Mm -hmm. Out of all the stuff you've been looking at, you're letting go of about 95% of it. Oh, that's great. Because you're looking at it like, I really don't need this stuff. I'm just enjoying the sensation. It's, it's a new way of thinking. It's almost like a intoxicant. <laughs> This is a major, major turnaround for Chris. Carpe diem, carpe diem, right? <laughs> Seize the moment. Dad. Seize the moment. Then, Seize the, the moment. It won't, I got it won't happen later on. I got, right, that's right. It'll happen now. <laughs> It'll happen now. Or it won't happen. <laughs> that's right. I mean, what a transition from Chris fighting everything to cleaning his entire house and cleaning out all of his storage units. I mean, what more could we ask for? If you guys are ready, I would love for you to see your home. My home? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not your apartment, your home. Ready? Yes. Let's go look. Oh my god. Whoa. Oh, wrong house. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at that. Whoa. Hobbyist, oh my yeah. Gosh. Oh mm. my gosh. Ah. That's beautiful. <laughs> Oh, that is beautiful. Oh. <laughs> I want to. I want to keep this process going. I want to keep it alive, and I want to keep moving forward into more dimensions of what what makes me happy. I'm very proud of you. I have great hopes for Chris. He wants to be with people. He likes people. Now people can come into his house. Would you like to have people here from time to time? You know? Yeah, that choice is precious. Yeah. This is right. a place for living. Right. Yeah. I'm overjoyed. It's just a remarkable fluke of fate that I was able to invite this wonderful bounty into my life. I feel tremendous relief. And the fact that my brother has been transformed, he has embraced the world. He was really gone to me for a long time. Maybe I'll have my brother back. When I first drove up to the house, I was so excited to finally see one of San Francisco's ornate Victorian homes, which became super popular after the movie Mrs. Doubtfire. You know, oh, Miranda, with Robin Williams. <laughs> oh, that ornate paint 
and care on the outside of the house didn't suggest that there were any problems on the inside. And that just goes to show you, we never really do know what goes on behind closed doors. My first impression entering the house and seeing the stuff, I thought, yeah, this is a happy hoard with nostalgic board games and toys and colorful gadgets, antique furniture. Yeah, but 15 minutes into the gig, it turned from happy to hard-nosed. And I thought we would need hard hats, not because of the hoard, but because of the anger BG and Lee had toward one another. And with those types of personalities, we always catch the blame for anything that is damaged or missing. And according to BG, my organizing team was breaking everything and it was time to shut us down. Okay, so we get locked out of the house and here we are ready to dive into our first day's worth of work, which Lee and BG wanted. Yet we are locked out. Their need for control was paramount. So we wait. And when we do finally get the blessing to go back to work, we're not allowed in the house, only outside. And then little by little, we're allowed in the basement and maybe in the entryway and perhaps the hallway and maybe the stairs. Often viewers ask, hey Dorothy, can't you just help the hoarder sell their stuff? Well, you know, while we always try to bring in an auction company or an estate dealer, the idea of putting together a yard sale is one of the biggest time wasters for our hoarding clients. And naturally, Lee thinks it is the best course of action. He wants a yard sale. These are always a nightmare to pull off, and here's why. First of all, the focus goes away from clearing the house to selling items for pennies on the dollar. Then I lose my organizer to posting the sale online and hosting the sale and watching that no one steals the items, which leaves only a few people to help me with the clearing of the house. And then at the end of the sale, there is usually disappointment as to how little money was made. Stuff is left over and our hoarders usually want to begin shopping in their own yard sale again, which means they are bringing that stuff back into the house. This routine is almost always predictable, and we just not need to let Lee see how his idea works out for himself. As it turned out, the yard sale was a complete flop, which gave us a little leverage to get into the house and at least clear one room. This is what's coming off of the floor. Urine infested vomit. Oh my God. Oh wow. We can't even shovel it out. This is insane. I knew it was bad, but damn, I didn't know it was this bad. Wow. There is nothing salvageable. Oh wow, you guys see this? See oh, all that stuff? God. You need to kind of chip it like ice. You know what that is? What the hell is that? This is a disaster zone. This is the same old behavior my grandma's been displaying since I was young. You could have been buried and nobody would have been able to get to you. This is nasty. I'm not gonna sleep with cockroaches and mice. She's not in our reality right now. I let everything go. I did not care. Good God. Horror of horrors. I'm seeing more and more dirt. What, maybe mud? No, that's... What is this? Oh, God. Did you know any of this was going on? Oh, my God! I am Linda. I'm a homemaker. I have one daughter. And the house is a disaster zone. It's a mess. I 
I'm Kristen, and I'm Linda's daughter. My mom has anything from trash, from fast food restaurants, whatever she's brought home, just thrown on the floor. She has a dog in the house. There is poop all over the floor. The last five years, I ended up food on the floor, cans on the floor, drinks. It just accumulated time after time and made a mess, big mess. She has no pathway. There's no way you can see the carpet of her house anymore. Things are stacked to the ceiling, literally. Yeah, I walked over everything, bare feet. I got used to walking over plastic and cans and orange juice bottles. Yeah, I just, I hold down to the, the chair. I hold down to the boxes, hold down to the plastic bins. When I got to the sofa, I just collapsed. The bathroom stopped working, and I've heard that she was using a bucket. The toilet doesn't work, no bathroom water. Everything's broke. It's hell. It's hell living here. I don't know why she wants to keep things and hoard. I just know my mom's been depressed for as long as I can remember. That also made my mom's hoarding worse. When I was growing up, the house was already showing signs of her hoarding. I'm Samantha, and I've been friends with Kristen since I was five years old. When we were kids, I wasn't allowed into the house at all. One time, Kristen snuck me in while her mom was shopping. It's actually a, a memory burned into my own brain because I'd never seen anything like that. So much stuff. The rooms upstairs, there was two that I believe was her hoarding rooms that she tried to hide from everyone. Nobody was allowed upstairs, completely closed off, and her mom was never home. She shopped. She was a shopaholic. She went all out, and she would spend I don't know how much money on all these decorations and whatnots. I enjoyed buying knickknacks, colorful things, things for inside, things for the yard. My dad would sometimes say things to her, but because she would snap off so quick, I think he just learned to deal with it. I can remember maybe two or three times at a very young age that I would help her clean. I got yelled at. I was like, okay, this is it. I'm not even gonna attempt anymore. I guess when I turned about 14, 15, I started getting in trouble. Her attitude towards her mom began to change and she started fighting back. Then all of a sudden she got hard and she wouldn't put up with nothing. Her mouth really got nasty. I was acting out because of different things at home. The messiness, the clutter. I was seeing the bugs. I was hearing mice. I just didn't want to be there to deal with it. So I would go and drink and I'd stay wherever just to not be at home. I couldn't take it anymore. I left home when I was 17. I had kids by the time I was 21, and I stopped drinking, traded one habit for another, and became hooked on painkillers. I screwed up a lot because of my drug usage. I'm Shantae, and I'm Linda's granddaughter. I was at school, and I got called onto the office. They said, you're to ride bus home. I walked in, and like everybody's crying, and sat down. And I was like, what's going on? And they're like, your mom got arrested. I just instantly broke down. I started freaking out, banging my head off walls, everything. And I was like, what do I do? I'm Dallas, and I'm Linda's grandson. I didn't know, because I was young, you know, I didn't know like, what was going on. I thought my mom was going to be gone for like a week, 
So then, next thing you know, she's in prison for two and a half years. The very thing that I hate it most now my kids were going through. It was a big responsibility, especially at my age. And my husband was so sick at the time with the congested heart failure. So I had full responsibility by myself taking care of the kids. Back then, the piles were about two feet on the ground. There was always cans, drinks, wrappers from restaurants, food, dog feces, you know. Some days I'd sleep on the recliner. Sometimes you'd sleep on the couch. Living there, I slept on the floor on like a hospital mattress that my grandpa had. I talked to my kids on the phone while I was in prison. The things I would hear literally tore me up. You don't want your kids to ever go through that. I did the best I can. I feel like that in my heart, that I did the best I could. We couldn't get to the kitchen, so I never had like home cooked meals, so and I always ate out like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Always. I'm Haley, and I'm Shantae's friend. They ate a lot of junk food. They never ate any hot meals or anything. They had a tote with a lid on it for rats not being able to get into it, and that's what they ate out of. Her mom died. My dad died while I was still locked up. And that's probably was her breaking point when it got to the extremes. Felt like I was doomed and pitched here and pitched there. I was in my own private hell. It was horrible. Depression is horrible. It can take over your whole body and your mind. I just didn't give a heck. I just let everything go because I felt so bad. She just gave up on the house because, like, she feels like she lost everything that was close to her. She didn't take care of the kids for Kristen. She never left her house. She became very isolated. The shopping stopped, and she just stayed inside. My grandma had cups of pee everywhere. Like, some mornings I'd wake up, and I'd look, and there'd be like dead mice that like drown in the pee. There was always bugs crawling on me. It stunk ungodly. And then I'd go to sleep, and I'd wake up, like, and I'd just smell so bad. And when I was in school, I got bullied a lot. Middle school's already awkward enough, you know? And then throw that on top of it, it's really like messes with you like a lot. My brother hated staying there. I watched over him. Even though I was younger than him, I knew that. Um, he was gonna like, get in trouble and stuff. I changed a lot. Started doing bad stuff, you know? Smoking cigarettes, drinking, fighting, breaking stuff. Just did what he was wanting to and heck with you. Just hateful, didn't want to listen to me, didn't want to stay put here at the house and always running with his friends. <laughs> I'm Caleb. I'm Dallas's best friend. Dallas and I being out all night, I think it was, like, it was due to like, the house there. And I don't think he, he didn't feel comfortable there. I wish I could have helped him, though, during that time. I mean, it was so bad that a CPS worker came down to the prison I was at and talk to me about the home situation. And I did not want my kids to go into foster care. So I begged him, I said, I've already hired an attorney, just give me a little bit of time to get back home. And everything went good. I got home a month later. My kids were instantly back home with me in my house. We moved back in with her and the CPS case went away. When I got my kids back home, their attitudes was totally different. It's like they'd been through hell and back, like they was actually returning from hell. When she went to prison, I felt like I blamed her, obviously. I, I was mad at her. My brother was so mad at her. 
He didn't want to talk to her for the longest time. And I was kind of like, you know, you kind of just like abandoned us, left us for this. That's kind of how I felt. I had this like anger where I just like really just wanted to hurt something. I mean, so I just started hitting stuff. Still to this day, if we get into it, Dallas likes to blame me. He's like, hey, mom, you don't know what we went through. I hate it for him. If I could erase it all their minds, I would. The beginning of March, I woke up to a bunch of text messages from my mom's neighbor saying she was very confused. A friend of hers and I went to the house. There was a lot of police and the ambulance, so they stopped. And my mom come out, and I went in. I don't know how it got that bad. I really don't. <sighs> and I just heard her say, she's like, Kristen, I didn't want you to see my house this way. I could not let her go back. She was buried alive, living in filth. It absolutely turned my life upside down because I turned into the OCD person of, I don't want my house to look like her house. So I'm not sleeping, I'm not eating, I'm staying up cleaning nonstop, waiting on her, picking up her mess. It's a lazy mentality. She just wants to play around, throw her trash on the ground and not pick it up ever, you know? And I was having to take stuff away from her. The kids were having to take trash away from her that she was not wanting to get rid of. She would like pee in cups, like cups, like our cups. And she would set them on our table because she slept on the couch. And um, she's like, well, why can the dogs pee and poop on the floor, but I can't? She was just so used to doing it at her house, like peeing and pooping in cups, that she just, oh, well, I'm going to do it here. My mom, I think she just hit her breaking point. She's sick. It's hard because all you see is the behaviors of the sickness. I don't see my mom. The sickness is taking over her. will kill her if she goes back in there and lives in that condition. I have no doubt in my mind. It will kill her. Hello. Hi. You must be Linda. Yes. Hello, Linda, Dr. Zazio. Nice meeting you. It's nice uh -huh. to meet you. I'm Dr. Robin Zazio. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist, and I specialize in OCD and hoarding disorder. Dallas? Yep. And Shantae? Yes. And Kristen? Hi. So, Linda, let's start with why you brought me here. <laughs> to be able to get back in my house again. OK. If I was walking down the street and I was blindfolded, I would know exactly where Linda's house is. The smell alone is pretty profound. And of course, I can see everything on your porch, which I'm assuming is because there's not enough room in your house. Right. Uh -huh. OK. Yeah. OK. How bad is it? It's real bad. You guys are shaking your heads over here. What does it look like? What am I going to see? A nightmare. I said, if we can get her some help and get her back home. My house was in perfect order so about six years ago. From what I understand, when the two of you were living here, CPS was called out. I don't know who called them, because they were creating a problem that wasn't there. Who was creating a problem? I don't know. Shantae, what's going on for you? It's not the truth. And you know it wasn't. Come sit down, Shantae. Tell Grandma. You know the house wasn't in 
good condition when we lived here. I got, I got bullied in school and stuff because of it. People made fun of me. My friends couldn't come over. Why were you bullied? Because um, I always had like a smell to me and they knew like the condition of the house. I could just tell. Just tell the truth. I you, am telling the you truth. You are making like, us look like. No, I'm not making you look like nothing. Dallas, how about for you? You were never ever here though. He wasn't here because why? Because it's nasty. I'm not gonna sleep with cockroaches and mice. She wants to claim that it was all right. Like we were in an okay living situation when we were living there. That's that's what really makes me mad. This is the same old behavior my grandma has been displaying since I was young. There's gonna be a lot of family work that needs to happen over the next couple yes. days. Kristen, I can tell you're starting to build here a little bit. What's going on for you? I just hate that these kids went through it. It's not what I wanted for my kids. And it was my fault that they had to. This is a therapeutic process to help heal you and the family and get your home in order so that this doesn't happen again. Right. OK? And Linda, I understand that you have suffered some medical conditions as a result of the home. No, I had problems before this, the clutter and trash. Let's back up the bus for a moment. Kristen, you have obtained guardianship over Linda because of the state of the home and your concern about her not only living in there, but going in there. Yeah. OK. And you've been hospitalized in the past week at least twice. Two or three times, yeah. Two or three times. I don't know what I'm going to see, but what I do know is there's enough information where I cannot let you go into that home at this time. At this point, I don't want Linda coming in for the tour. I think it's too dangerous. She's got respiratory problems. She's got a hernia that appears to be recently activated. She uses a walker. I can't, in any good conscience, put her at risk. Let's go suit up and see what we've got inside. Okay. We're putting on hazmat suits because I have no idea what we're going to find. I've heard there's been dogs, mice, rats, all defecating all over the place. So I need to be prepared. See what you guys are talking about at this point. This is much worse than I thought. You need to be extremely careful coming in. The entire floor is covered with trash. Wow. The stairwell is completely barricaded. Guys, this is the way to the second floor. Yeah. Oh, wow. You guys see this? That is all rodent waste. You can see the urine. There is feces everywhere. From the flies on the walls, there's insects buzzing past our ears. This is a disaster zone. That's, that's the level at which the rodents are this high also running around. Look at all the shredded stuff. Smelling everything, seeing everything, just shot me right back to my childhood. I just felt like disgusted and I needed to take a second and take everything in. They ain't gonna jump on us, right? You know what? That's a great question. And honestly, I can't guarantee that. Can we, can we move? You trip me the hell out. It's nasty. There's cobwebs everywhere. There's feces everywhere stacked up like four feet. Disgusting. See all oh that stuff God. going up the side what of the, the wall hell there? Is that? See the trim? That's all fly waste. That is where they have been pooping. How has she been living like this? The good news is, with your mom's permission, we're going to get this taken care of. But it's going to be critical 
that she get treatment so that this doesn't happen again. The way we were living and stuff, I, I just don't want to think about it. And it just kind of brought up some nasty, bad memories, really. Where, where did everybody sleep? I slept on that mattress right there, on the floor. That mattress? Yep. There was a mattress that she could see in the far corner that she used to sleep on covered in waste. And it's completely unimaginable how she could have possibly slept there. What gravely concerns me about this situation, quite frankly, the majority of this is actually garbage. I know. So what is going on? Why can't she let go of trash? What is wrong with her? I don't get it. Let's keep rolling here. All right, guys, I, I would absolutely love to say that um, watch your step, but everywhere you look, there's dog feces, everywhere. Like, you, we're walking in it. In my honest opinion, I would just torch it, really. It's disgusting. Do you know if this is where the dog lived? That's her chain. Yep, she was chained up to you for so long. She was chained to this yeah. plant stand? How many years? Like, almost a decade, wasn't it? Mom? I don't know. That's where it lived. And so it had one area to eat, drink, and literally go to the bathroom. Sadly, this is the kitchen. The kitchen's going to have to be gutted. There, there's, there's not any cleaning supply in the world that is gonna get rid of the, the waste that has been here for years. Talk She's to me. She's so sick. She's about to be really, really sick. Like, I knew it was bad, but I could never imagine that it got this bad. What are your memories of this house, Kristen? No, my dad worked his ass off for it. And now it's worth nothing. I'm surprised my mom is not dead in those conditions. It really breaks my heart. She's getting help. She's mentally ill. She needs some serious help. That's not normal. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the marathon. Are you? Don't forget to watch Hoarders on Sundays at 7 a.m. Eastern on A&E. Oh, and if you're interested in becoming a professional organizer like me, just visit www.bossorganizer.com and come to my free web class. Um, you know what? Is, is there an exit out yeah. this way? Okay, why don't you go this way? And Dallas, why don't you head out this way too? Kristen, I think we should assess second floor, see if we can get up there. All right, let's All right. go. Is, is probably 85, 90 pounds. How did she get all this stuff in here? Kristen, please be extremely, extremely careful. Oh. It's gonna be harder to try to get out of here than it was to get up here. Oh my God. Oh, wow. Uh, well, Kristen, I mean, I hate to say it, but this is as far as we can go. Uh, you know what that is? Where? Right in front of us. What the hell is that? That's part of the ceiling. Oh. So, we got bigger issues here. The walls are literally separating. I'm sure this isn't easy because this is the house you grew up in. And she let it go to shit. She won't leave it in her house or in her mind. She didn't figure out what was going on with her. 
There's no question about it. She's she's pretty guarded. All right, let's get out of here and get some fresh air. Yeah, I need it. As we was walking up the stairs, hoping I could see my room, we wasn't able to get to it. No way. Not today. Everything is buried. But it seems like there's no house at all. It's just all her trash. Got it, Kristen? Oh. Okay. Woo. It's in bad shape. No. There isn't any place that we can walk where there isn't rat, mouse, or dog waste. Mm -hmm. What else did you see? The walls are separating in the corner. You're kidding. No. I'm really scared that it's not going to be salvageable structurally. I'm worried. The, the ceiling is literally dropping onto the ground. We're at in your room. The master bedroom? Yeah, the master Is that room. because of the roof or what? There's so much stuff in the house that it, it's it's producing weight on the structure of the house, literally causing it to separate. Even the stairwell is starting to cave in. Yeah. I cannot believe that. The good news is the stuff is can be replaced. You can't be replaced. Right? right? You've buried yourself. Why didn't you tell me any of this? Why didn't you have me come oh, help I you? I didn't want to bother you. We're having problems of your own. And it's not yes. the point. It's You should have told me you need help and, with uh, your house, and I would have come over here and helped you. Part of me just feels sorry for her. Part of me questions why she uses all these excuses, why she didn't ask me for help. And part of me is pissed that she let the house go to hell. What was going on with you? Because I just don't believe that every day you came home and thought to yourself, wow, I love this home. I love coming home. I just more or less gave up. I just said, heck with it. You're not supposed yeah. to give up. I did, though. I did. I just didn't give a hell. And I let everything go. I did not care. You're supposed to fight and not give up. We got to heal this family. Yes. Got to heal this family. Good. OK. All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you. Hello, hello. Are we ready to get started today? Yes. Yeah. I'm Dorothy Brenninger. I'm a professional organizing expert, and I specialize in hoarding. We've got friends. We've got relatives. We've got daughters. We've got grandkids. This is wonderful. Everything on the downstairs floor seems to be deteriorated or soiled or broken. It's in bad shape. When we get this house clean, I'm just worried. Well, I don't even know that we can get it clean. I'm thinking power washer to do the floors and the doors and the walls. It's nasty. And then plumbing issues, electrical issues. I can't even get in to see if I can flush a toilet or turn on the water. I just don't know what's going on in there. So basically, if it's broken, Throw it, it should away. go. Yes. If it's soiled, Throw it away. If it has dog do all throw over it, it throw it away. <laughs> yes. Got it. So it sounds like you're in a pretty good space and you know what to do. Oh, yes. All right? Yay. So I'm proud of you. <laughs> well, everybody, are we proud of Linda? Yay. Yes. Yes. So you're going to be sitting over there. We're going to parade right on by. OK. Are we clear, everybody? Yes. All right. I want you wearing masks. I want you in gloves. Everybody, that way. Let's go. Linda, and I'll help you up. start handing things out as 
you go by Linda, show her items, and then put it on the truck. But basically, everything should be tossed. Clear? Yeah, go. Great. Yeah, go. Go? Uh, keep. Yeah, keep. All of it? Uh-huh. Okay, over there. Is this something that you think you'll clean? Yes, definitely, uh-huh. I will, yeah. Have we given approval to that over there? That stuff she wants to yeah, keep. Yeah, I want to keep that. But there's going to be further discussion about that gate. Yeah, the gate should gate go. Gate I'm going to come back with the gate. Well, I thought I'd keep it for, uh, when I leave, I could put the gate up for the dogs. But let's, OK, let, let's just take a quick moment to talk about these dogs. How are you going to, in either a wheelchair with a walker, care for two dogs that are going to need to go out half a dozen times a day to go to the bathroom? How are you going to do that? Like I did before. The fact that she had them chained up is very concerning because she truly believes that she was providing adequate care for these dogs. And I do want to tell you something. My dog was really keeping it going. You know, I can't wait to get them back in the house. Yeah, you just have to I love my dogs. They're like children to me. And her hope, her desire, is that she's going to get these dogs back again. The dog was living in its own urine and poop. Yeah, it was eating he in the place. With me. He slept in Not when my legs. you were gone and he was chained to the to the the plant stand. Yeah. And but not all the time. He was running around like uh, Linda. Now. You can't be chaining them up. Oh no, they're not. Harley wasn't chained up. He, only you chained up a dog and you left yeah, no, that dog no. in its own urine and feces, and that's where it ate. It's a rusted chain. He ate sometimes in the living room. And I got to tell you one other piece. That collar was embedded in your dog's neck. It was embedded. Kristen had to cut it out of the dog's neck. She never told me that. Not only is Linda incapable of taking care of herself, she's not capable of taking care of any animals either. You have to be at a, an emotional and a physical capacity to care for these animals. And you've got to have a heart to heart with yourself to make sure you can do that. Because oh, yeah. that, that was not OK. This is the house you wanted to see. Can you see all of the uh, feces? SOS pads wouldn't help. Think about this. Animals have been pooping and peeing on this, and you want to clean it to give it to a child who's going to touch it, potentially put their fingers in their mouth. You can never, you can never give a child never. something that oh, yeah, is I covered. See that Get rid of it. Okay. Yeah, I see okay. It can someone take this and put it on the truck, please? Thank you. Everything in that house has, in fact, been contaminated. See, all, this is all poop. Yeah. And that's urine from the, the rodents and everything. Uh -huh. There isn't anything that could possibly be in there unless you think there's jewelry or something of value in which they can go through it. But I don't want them to go through it here because all the, the, the feces is going to come flying at us okay. with the wind. All right. So permission to go? I don't need it. But... Okay. The reality is the percentage of stuff that she can hold on to is going to be not even close to being proportional to what has to go. I want you to take a whiff of this for a second, OK? Mildew, isn't it? Urine. I'd like to put that one in the wash machine. Hey, this is one of those things you're going to have to let go of. Uh, those were nice no. Christmas gifts, and they can be washed and laundered. Matt, then we'll clean this. Yes, they will. I've been to the laundromat many a times. You don't need that. It's contaminated. You've got to let it go. 
it's replaceable, okay? I love my blankets. I know, and they can be replaced, too. And they're beautiful, but, but look. Uh, you can't get that out. Linda and Kristen do not communicate well. In fact, they don't even make eye contact when they're talking to one another. I don't want to argue. I'm getting tired. I want everything to go. You want it all to go. Can you if just tell be, that to your mother, please? If it can be replaced, get rid of it. Get the out so we can assess we the damages. We are doing that. I know that. I've heard it in your mouth. I've heard it, yes. We're getting rid of the stuff. Look at the truck. OK. Linda's doing a lot of hiding behind her sunglasses so that she doesn't really have to share her feelings and deal with some of the painful emotions that she's pushed down. Dallas, can you take off your mask for me? Because I want to talk to the two of you. My question to both of you is, I'm looking at all of this, feces and all sorts of nasty. Yeah. And I'm seeing all sorts of clothes, probably from when you were kids. Was this the stuff that you were sleeping in and walking on and living in when you were living here? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was your clothing soiled like this? I mean, how did you pick out clothes to go to school? Um, you had bins. You had bins. Like those totes like those. We have our clothes in them. Come on in, Kristen. I'm asking the question if this is the kind of stuff that they were she dealing with. She had clean with. clothes every day, both no, kids we did. said. No. Well, that's what I'm. Speak up, Dallas. Speak up. We, not we went to clothes. the laundromat every week down here. And Shantae knows I spent about $40 a week doing the laundry each week. My opinion of what she was saying about the past, I think she was lying because, I mean, I was there. I witnessed it. She's just got something wrong in her head, really. She had clean clothes. You can ask the teacher. And Dallas had clean clothes. Linda is rewriting her own narrative about what exactly happened. She's saying you had clean clothes. I went to the laundromat every week. Linda is telling Shantae and Dallas you went to school with clean clothes. And they're coming back saying, yeah, we went to the laundromat. The problem is, is we were living with mice and cockroaches and poop. We were going to school in clothes that smelled like urine. CPS got called because of how we smelled and how we looked. I'm seeing this come out, and this was your life for how many years? Two. It was not two, it was like three. Three. Your mom it was 25 months. Okay, two. Sorry. I thought it was probably three. felt like a lot longer than that. Yeah. And I'm sorry. It's cool. I'm kind of dirty, but. Oh. I'm just glad we're not living in it anymore. We're not. This is the last note that you wrote me before you. Y'all looked up and I put it in Aww. my binder and taped it there. What does it say? Read it. Tay Tay, I hope you have an awesome day. Love, Mom. Study hard. I found my journal and I taped like the note that she left me before I left for school. And the day that she left for prison, I taped it on the inside of my agenda so I could look at it every day. And I totally forgot about it. What's that one say? I love my mommy. Like, I had it everywhere. <laughs> like, right here, right here. It was really emotional finding all these things from the past. It breaks my heart. Like, I really screwed up and wasn't there for him for two years. So, I mean, I love her. <laughs> She's my baby girl. <laughs> and your, all your letters that you wrote me are somewhere in there. I'm just happy that she really does on me and she forgives me. Let me give you a few tips for organizing staircases in your own home. First of all, beginning today, teach everyone that this is not a storage space. Never store anything on the stairs because, gosh, there are over a million injuries that occur 
every year as the result of stairway falls. Plus, staircase and stairway accidents constitute the second leading cause of accidental injury, only to, I guess, second to motor vehicle accidents. And next, when you're clearing your stairs, always start on that bottom stair and avoid going upstairs with anything until you've cleared all the stairs. Third, every year check for defects in the stairs or the stairwell or the stairway and look for something as simple as a hole in the carpet, which can cause tripping, right? Be sure to check for poor lighting or defective railings or handrails and then make those repairs. And remember, once you've implemented the no storage on the staircase rule, communicate it to everybody in the house. Yesterday we brought out tons and tons from the house to be thrown away. We cleared the entire entryway. So today the weather is very bleak, bad, rainy, terrible. We have tents set up everywhere, one for the family, one for us. We're going to have a great attitude. We are going to get this place as clean as we can possibly do it in the time that we have. Let's go. Come on in. Pick a location, come on in, gather around, and then we'll have a quick conversation. I put down a big tarp in the middle, rake it into the middle of the tarp, take the tarp out, dump the tarp out onto the truck. This is what we're calling dump and dig. All right, let's go. And don't worry about mice, they'll be here. Four of us are going out. Somebody else put the tarp in. How are you feeling today? This is a little tired. Just yeah. Do you remember I warned yesterday. you about that? Yeah, overwhelming. Yeah. She's having a pretty rough time. She understands the rationale as to why she needed to let go of the stuff, but it's still pretty emotional. It was worse than a broken love affair yesterday. It was overwhelming having to throw away stuff. It really bothered me. I know, you know, I know. When I got to the room, I just thought about it and I just passed out. I had sort of warned you about that. Do oh, you remember yes. like, you know, you've got all this stuff here, there it goes. I mean, I would kind of liken it to like getting in a car accident and getting out and you have all this stuff to do and then you get home and you're like, wow. I know. What just happened? Right. It was overwhelming. Yeah, yeah. She's feeling pretty exhausted, pretty tired, and unsure about how she's going to do today. of the floor, okay? Yes. Everything is wet. Oh, God, You're yes. an infested vomit. Yeah. There is nothing salvageable. No. We can't even go through it enough no. to save it. Throw it away. It's all going to be shoveled this right now. Yes, uh-huh. And put right on the truck. Do you yes. understand? Yes, I do. You give uh -huh. me permission to do that? Oh, yes, yes. Okay. We're cleaning out the living room and there's so much of it, it's really, really concerning. We can't even shovel it out. It's nasty. Don't go so deep. Here's what I wanna do. You need to, you need to kind of chip it like ice. Chip it like ice, okay? And pull it toward you. Then you can shovel it up, okay?
we're cleaning out the living room, I'm seeing more and more dirt, maybe mud. No, that's human waste. Kristen, I want you to come over here for a second. Shantae, come on over. Can you lift up your mask so I can just talk to both of you for a second? If you can tolerate it, thanks. My question to you is, is this something that you saw when you were here or is this worse than when you lived here? Definitely Shantae. worse. It's definitely worse. There was like cups of poop everywhere and pee and stuff. Cups of poop? Yeah. Your grandmother was pooping in a cup. Yeah. So what we're coming into is human. Yeah, probably all that. Feces. Probably all of it, yeah. I'm disgusted. Did right you now. know any of this was going on? No. no. And I know this is really fragile, Shantae. When your grandmother would need to use a cup to either urinate or go to the bathroom, did she do that privately or publicly? How, how did publicly. you? Publicly. Publicly. Yeah. In front of you. So I said, are you hitting me? So. Is there any way that you could have imagined that your daughter was experiencing your mom no. going to the bathroom in a cup in the living room in front of her? There's no excuse for that. Does that make you feel sad, angry, or you just want to run away and say, I don't want to deal with it? All of the above. I'm really pissed off right now. What would you say if your mom were right here? Go for it. What would you say? What the f were you doing? She's clearly sick. Anybody that would do that has got some serious problems. This is insane. I've never, this is a mind blowing. human waste. Are you kidding me? There's no excuse for that. So I think we should ask maybe Linda to come in so you can talk to your mom about this. I don't even want to talk to her right now. Right. I, I, how can she do this, seriously? Well, this is what I want you to stay here for a moment because she needs to understand what this is and you need to have a communication about it. Someone get, ask Linda to come in, carry her in. Carry Linda on in here. She is sicker than I imagined. I was not expecting this when I first called to get her help. This is blowing my mind. The reason that I want you here, Dr. Zazio, and Linda here, is because as the girls were working, they're coming against all of this stuff that has now deteriorated. And when I'm asking, what is this stuff? And remember, I said I'd tell you when I was going to say something really difficult, OK? But it's human feces. I don't even know what to say. Like, why have you not? Why? Why have you been doing this? Why haven't you tried to get help way before I got to this point? I really I didn't know that this I never was all human in here. I never had no control over my bowels. I did tell the doctor. I went three to five times a day. Why don't you go to the toilet? Why in here? Well, I never walked. I never, I walked on the cane and. You could drive though. You can walk on the cane. You could have got a porta pot. When I did get this up, is, everything. This is has... going into the freaking carpet. This is insane. I knew it was bad, but damn, I didn't know it was this.
bad. The biggest thing for me was that she wasn't concerned about it. She wasn't disturbed. She wasn't feeling embarrassed. She wasn't feeling called out. She had no emotion or reaction whatsoever. Shantae would publicly see her, her grandmother use a, a cup or something to you hey, know, yeah, go to the yeah. bathroom. Or, and, and this was just okay, like yeah. a normal day for Shantae and Dallas. Was the bathroom working? Yeah, but it was still working. During the times when you saw her using a cup to urinate, was there running water in a bathroom? Yeah. I never so used a cup why here. Would you... Why are you lying? Her lying is like, it's making me feel like she didn't see an issue in her actions. My blood started to boil. I was like getting really agitated. But you don't remember me like you handing me cups of pee to throw out by the bush. No, but I don't. But you definitely did it in the cups, and I, I personally had to throw them out there right by that bush. So I have a question for you, Linda. At that point, when there was that first moment where you said that you lost control and there was the human waste in this living room, why would you continue doing that? The deep depression, and then I was, you know, disoriented. I'm asking her, Linda, what happened? And she really has no explanation other than she was really depressed and she was a little confused. That cannot in any way explain how somebody for years could defecate on the floor and have no emotional reaction whatsoever. Can I get this off? I don't feel no, 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 very no. good. Don't you dare this, take that off. You can't breathe this. This is extremely oh. dangerous. Can I get out? I don't feel very good. I bet you don't. No, I don't. Get her out. We gotta get this done. I will not do this again. Why don't you take off your mask and, no, and tell your no, mom? I don't want to. Nobody should have to do this. She's in denial. She clearly has a problem. I can't. How can somebody do that? <laughs> I'd like for us to now clear the dining room and the kitchen. There's no debating it. It's just going on the truck. Let's go. I'm really excited to get into the dining room because I'm sure that the worst of this is over. How much worse can it get than having human excrement all over the living room? And as we start cleaning it out, horror of horrors, I'm seeing a, a, a hook screwed into the wall and I'm seeing chains and a leash. This is what is disturbing. Yeah, I know. Tell me, tell me what I'm seeing, please. The dog that she had the most hurt from losing, she kept the dog chained up right here. And there's another whole chain of... That's on... where I took, I rescued one from over there. I mean, it's skin and bones, and it was like learning how to walk again, basically, from being on, what, that much chain? And like, every dog she gets, she ties up. Every dog she gets, she chains up. Linda's dogs were chained. They were urinating and defecating all in the same spot. The fact that she had them chained up is very concerning because she truly believes she was providing adequate care mm -hmm. for these dogs. Good dog. Lord knows how long that dog was there, was eating, pooping, and I know. living in a six, six inch line of rusted chain. This is the one that was chained here is the one she was most attached to. The one that she was, you're hearing that, right, doctor? The one that she was most attached to, she chained here. Based on the response she had to all that waste 
that was in there, which was no response. She had no reaction at all to what we were all seeing. I think that she needs a psychological evaluation because I do believe the more time I spend with her that she has the early stages of dementia. I, I truly think she's a danger to herself, quite frankly. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the marathon. Are you? Don't forget to watch Hoarders on Sundays at 7 a.m. Eastern on A&E. Oh, and if you're interested in becoming a professional organizer like me, just visit www.bossorganizer.com and come to my free web class. I think that she needs a psychological evaluation. I, I truly think she's a danger to herself, quite frankly. She's not in our reality right now. Shante, tell her what she did to our bathroom. She would like literally poop on the floor. This is what I'm having to deal with now that I'm taking her into my home. Well, the fact that she was continuing to engage in the same behavior at your house, yeah. when she had a perfectly clean, accessible bathroom, yeah. I mean, it's almost primitive what she's doing. And, and I think, uh, quite honestly, she's been doing this for so long that it, it doesn't cross her mind that she has a bathroom. Right. She just does what she's been doing. I felt like I was retraining her. For what I believe about 10 years. Yeah. I don't think that she truly sees anything wrong. She don't. With the way she's been living. So honestly, this is why I think she needs a psychological evaluation, you know? Yeah. This is, I can't do it though. I have never been in a situation where someone, once they have had access to a working bathroom, have chosen not to use it. My concern is that this could be dementia or some other deep psychological issue going on. Either way, I don't think she is capable of living on her own. I don't think that she's capable of moving back into her home. And I don't think that she is going to be in a place to move back to Kristen's house. That wasn't my plan. My plan was to get my mom back home, get her healthy, back in a healthy environment. I know. I There's happy. a reason we say one day at a time, right? There's no way you could have done this okay. when you weren't healthy. Now you're in recovery. You're healthy. It's the only way you can manage this. You get I know. that? Yeah. You know it. I know. I know. I know. Look at me. You didn't do anything too late. You're doing it. And it's all in the right time. You look at the house. It's a metaphor for what's really going on for everybody. You're doing all of this. I know you're doing all of this and it's thankless, completely thankless. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's time for me to just put the organizer aside and step into being a human being. It's raining again today. And I don't know how it happens, but when the odds are against us, the odds are against us all the way. But we are committed to doing what we can for Linda and the family. Today, it's, it's pretty simple. The bottom floor of the whole house has been cleared out. Oh my goodness. Okay, so what we're going to do today is go upstairs and we're going to start bringing down all the bins that you have up there. You want to take a guess at how many there are? Probably 32. 
Okay. I'm going to guess it's more toward 100. 100? Oh, my <laughs> God. Let, let me ask you this. When was the last time you were actually upstairs? Yeah, 10 or 12 years. So 12 years that stuff has been sitting up there, which makes me question, based on what was downstairs, what upstairs looks like. It's not that bad upstairs. It's not no clutter or trash. Everything's put away. A lot of new, clean stuff. It's put away or it's stored in, the bins. in bins? Yeah, stored okay. bins, yeah. Okay, that's but two different no, things. <laughs> no clutter or anything to break up off the floor. But what we're going to do, Linda, we're going to start any minute. We're going to be bringing all those bins down. I'm going to have uh, the junk team and the organizers do a chain. They're just going to hand it all the way off down here. We're going to line it up down through um, to the sidewalk here. So let's see what we've got to deal with, OK? okay. You're in position. I want you to go up a couple of stairs, up a couple of stairs. You're perfect. Everybody stand here. We're going to just pass it all down. Are you all ready? Everybody up there ready? OK, let's go. Start passing. There's this toy box that says Kristen's Toys. Yeah. Is that something that you're going to want to keep? I don't want to keep anything. I'm so glad to hear you say it. I said to my team this was going to be a much easier day because all of the human waste and all of the deterioration of the house was really downstairs. But as we went upstairs, we were finding feces everywhere holes in the stairs. In the master bedroom, you could see through to the attic upstairs. There was just cracks everywhere, and the house is settling. The structure is gone. I have to explain the bad news to Linda. Unlike what we all predicted, it's full of mouse poop and everything up there, too, Linda. I'm, I'm sorry, honey, but you know, things are just as bad upstairs. Maybe there's no human waste. Maybe there isn't any dog waste. But it's all mouse infested. Everything is urinated on, pooped on. You thought you maybe had 30 bins. At this count right now, we've got um, 202 out here. 202? We've probably got about a thousand boxes in there in addition to more bins every other bin that i open is just full of mouse poop i'm just going to lay down what i see as a fact this house is not safe there is no way you can move back into this house this house is probably going to have to be condemned that's my hopes and dreams of getting back in the house that was my hope and plan else. to get you back in yeah, here. Yeah, I know. You worked hard to get this done, Chris, and I know that. My main concern know is to bad. get back into the house. I didn't know it was that bad. I, I was trying to get you back in it. I know that's my main concern. I went through all this stuff, and I can't get back in my house. My God, after I went through all this, I got rid of all this stuff so I could get back in my house. My God. I've been here since 76. My God, I went through all this and I can't get back in my house. This house is probably going to have to be condemned. My God. I went through all this and I can't get back in my house. Linda, listen, there's a few things that are important to know. Our ethical job is to tell you what we know, okay? And the fact that there was about a foot of human waste, okay, mm -hmm. in your living room that has saturated into the floor and is continuing to emit contaminants into the air, makes that home not safe. Just for those reasons, add in 
the dog waste that still remains, the rodent waste that still remains that has saturated into the walls, okay? The foundation is not safe. The floors are bowed. It is unsafe at every level. That's what we're trying to explain to you. The whole goal has been for Linda to move back in the house. And we've discovered that that's not gonna happen. And she's not taking it well. In order to live in this house, structurally, the building could fall on you. The ceilings. So Linda truly had no idea how bad things were. She couldn't understand it. She couldn't comprehend it. That's shocking because she lived there. It's bad. Is it Kristen? The roof, the floors. I didn't know this. Of course then it not. would collapse. I could have fell on you while he was in there. You could have been buried and nobody would have been able to get to you. You could have been buried underneath the ceiling. Well, I didn't know. I'm sorry. I know. But do you hear what we're saying? Do you hear why we're saying what we're saying? <clears throat> yes. Everybody wanted a happy ending to get the house cleared. I think, Dorothy, you had arranged for a cleaning company to come in move ev all your furniture back in like that was the plan but none of us knew what was buried below the stuff is there some way i can keep my house and and move back in if i get feeling kind of funny i'll just leave for a while i want to keep my house i've been here since 76. you know i'm, I'm stronger now it'll never get this way again I want to keep my house. I want to move back in. I understand. I feel like you're not hearing what we're saying. Oh, I know what you're saying. And you're saying if you feel funny that you will leave. Well, where will you go? Do you see? Well, I think I'll... And, and, and this isn't meant to offend you, Linda, but your judgment is, is somewhat impaired. She kept questioning us. I'm a psychologist, I'm not a contractor, Dorothy's an organizer. So I thought to help her better understand the unlivable conditions that we needed to bring in an expert. So we called in extreme cleaner, specialist in biohazard Corey Chalmers to concur with our impression that the house was not salvageable. We're gonna call him right now and see what he has to say about the pictures he has seen and the information we've given him. Okay. Okay? There's gonna be some, maybe some hope then. I, I can't answer that question, so we're gonna get him on the phone. <clears throat> Corey Chalmers, welcome. Thank you, guys. Hey, Corey, thanks for joining us today. We need you. Uh, you got it, Dorothy. How can I help you guys? Um, as you know, uh, I've given you a little bit of information in addition to some pictures. And, you know, we're not biohazard experts. We have a good sense of what we think is going on, but we wanted to hear from you. So the, the photos that were sent to me um, obviously show some pretty serious conditions there. So from my experience, a house like that, honestly, if I were in there cleaning that, I would be recommending that it get completely demoed down to the studs and rebuilt because there's really nothing that a cleaner can do at this point. We can't clean, apply a disinfectant to really do what it's supposed to do, and that's make the house safe and functional. We just can't do that. You know, there's too much going on there. It's saturated into the wood flooring, so all that wood is porous, so it has to be removed. And a lot of the drywall and the trim and things like that are absolutely saturated. And there's things growing on the floor, I can see, which is very odd. Um, so to make that house safe, there's no way to do so without removing everything that's been exposed to this environment for the last several years, I would imagine, and completely rebuilt. So I'm sorry to have to tell you guys that. There's a ton of bacteria in there. If you were gonna get that house tested, they would do air sampling, surface sampling, and it would be off the charts with stuff that you would not wanna live with. Okay, so just don't wanna take any chances and risks with your health. It's just not worth it. I understand your house is your home, it's very important, but your health and the three generations help that I see you there should be the priority. You know, Corey, uh, 
all you have done is just reinforce everything that Dorothy and I have been telling her, especially that last piece, that this has been entirely about safety, 100%. It's heartbreaking. It's very sad. I know, and unfortunately, this is just a side like effect it. of severe hoarding. It really yeah. is. We see it a lot, and it is very sad. You guys have made the best decision about what to do with the house, but please don't move back into it. Okay. Thanks, All right. Corey. Thanks, Corey. You're the best. Right. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Bye. 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 Yeah, I understand. It's bad. Health hazard, and it's best that I don't go back in. So what we have wanted to reinforce to you through outside experts is the gravity of the situation. Yeah. I mean, it's heartbreaking. I had planned and prayed and had all hopes getting her back home. I tried. I really I tried to get her back in. Wow, well, it's too far gone. I tried to do what I could. I know you did. I knew it wasn't was healthy in there, but yeah. I thought. I knew you tried to do your best. You ran here, and um, you know, I thought for sure that get back in the house. You yeah. did everything. You ought to be proud of yourself. <laughs> I tried to fix it. I know you did. My God, I know that. Well, I'm, I'm proud of you. My God. I thought for sure that things would happen, the plan would go through and get back in the house. Yeah, you did everything. You ought to be proud of yourself. I'm sorry. My driver thinks that, my God, I know that. I'm proud of you, my God. I thought for sure it worked. I don't know what to say either. I'm, the plan didn't work. I love my house. I really do. Kristen was crying. Linda certainly was crying. I think today, even though there's a lot of despair for the family, there's also a lot of opportunity for freedom because we have the facts and everybody can start to make sense of what to do. We have a contractor coming over to give us an idea of the salvageability of the house. We're asking you to come in and take a look and check the structural integrity of the house, what you can observe, and consider what it might cost to repair. I'm going to actually walk him through from room to room, upstairs, downstairs, to get his feedback, see what he thinks about the whole thing, so that the family knows what they're up against. The floor was saturated with human waste. It's gone into the wood. We've had a lot of tree growth coming through in here. We pulled out all the branches already. The ceiling is coming in here. We move into the dining room, and he sees the floor is just completely warped. The floor joists is gone. They're rotted totally. This was where uh, the dogs lived, and unfortunately, they were not taken out to walk, so they urinated and defecated in here. Oh, yeah. It's kind of shocking to see it that bad. We are all walking through the house. James, the contractor, he's never seen anything like it at all. There's still stuff in the house. Is it safe for her crew to be coming up here? Actually, no, not really. I don't, I feel that everything should be left behind. Try to get just the personal belongings, pictures and stuff like that. Other than that, I would just let it all go. What's the verdict? If my mother lived here, no exceptions. I would have did whatever I had to to get you out of here. 
the structural integrity of your building is really in bad shape. Nobody should even be walking around in there. It would cost you too much money to try to repair this place. It's not worth it. It'd be cheaper just to take and build another house here and tear it down. I was afraid of that. James doesn't think anyone would really come in and be able to repair this. And if so, it would be upward of $160,000. And that's even without plumbing and new siding and paint and appliances. You know, you're looking at well over 200000 just to fix it. My team can't go in anymore. There's nothing really to get out except for some things in the sunroom, but we can't go in anymore. We're supposed to stay out. No one should actually go in that house ever again. It should be left alone, boarded up, and tore down. Given that we can't get back in the house to access anything more, we have to leave what's upstairs. We're not going inside ever again. Neither are they. So the junk team, they're leaving completely empty. Now we know for sure that this house should be condemned and completely bulldozed. I think it's time to find out what the value is of at least the plot of land. So I called a real estate agent to see if he or she can come over and take a look. A gentleman by the name of Tyler is here. He's our real estate agent. He's looked at comps in the area to see what this property is worth. And by property, I mean just the lot, not the house. Hey, Tyler. Hey. Okay. All right, so mm -hmm. what have you got for us? Um, I think as is, if you know that you need to tear the property down, uh, lot value, I think uh, anywhere from about twelve dollars to $15,000. And what do you know, if anything, about the cost to demolish a home this size? Um, usually, it can range anywhere from about $6,000 to $10,000. What about demolishing the house and I keep the lot where I could build a prefab or mobile home on it? Yeah, you could. Okay. You could demolish, demolish the house yourself. OK. All right. Thank you, Tyler. Appreciate thanks. it. Hey, yep. thanks so nice much. You. Thank nice you for you. being Pleasure here. Pleasure meeting you. Yeah, thanks nice for coming on such much. short notice. All right, so Linda. Feeling disappointed? You were hoping oh, yeah. for a little more money. Right, uh-huh, absolutely, yeah. I think maybe we could just sit together as the two of you and, and you, Dr. Zazio, to go over the organizational plan for moving forward, okay. okay? It's now time for us to actually board up the windows of the house and put caution tape around the front of the house to give everybody the clear understanding that this house is uninhabitable. And it's really a sad day. It's a sad, sad thing to have to do. And it's even worse to have the person who owns that house and who loves that house watch me doing it. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the marathon. Are you? Don't forget to watch Hoarders on Sundays at 7 a.m. Eastern on A&E. Oh, and if you're interested in becoming a professional organizer like me, just visit www.bossorganizer.com and come to my free web class. It's now time for us to actually board up the windows of the house and put caution tape around the front of the house to give everybody the clear understanding that this house is uninhabitable. And it's really a sad day. It's a sad, sad thing to have to do. And it's even worse to have the person who owns that house and who loves that house watch me doing it. This is the one opportunity I have to get Shantae, Dallas, Linda, and Kristen to start talking about the events that have led to this house being condemned. What I want to do is, is 
open the door to helping this family heal a little bit. One of the things that, that I've observed is that emotions and issues are not dealt with. And what's also interesting, everybody's got a different story about what happened. So Kristen, can I start with you and just open the door to whatever it is you want to process in this moment? Go on to somebody else. I'm, I can't right now. OK. Shantae? I don't know. No one has anything to say. Dallas, how about for you? Take us back to that time. Were you able to tell your grandma how upsetting the environment was for you? I, I just didn't want to sleep where there's cockroaches crawling all over you and mice. It's nasty. She claimed that it was clean. Mm -hmm. You never mentioned it to me. We always did. We always tried to clean up. She would always just say that it was it was fine, that we were in an OK environment, when we all know that it, it was It wasn't bad then, or yes, the was. services would have had you removed. Linda. It was still Linda. nasty. Dallas is saying there was mice and cockroaches, mm -hmm. and you're invalidating we him. We couldn't even shower. Sure enough, as soon as Shantae and Dallas started to talk about what it was like living in the home, Linda invalidated their experience. Linda, you're still sort of defending the house was clean. It was at the time when they were there, well, or they would have had them removed, the kids removed. If it, if it was clean, the CPS wouldn't. came to visit me and told me how bad it was. I said, please try to hold off on doing anything so I can get out and get them back home with me. She's not understanding that CPS came out for a reason. They didn't do anything because they went and talked to Kristen while she was incarcerated, and she begged and pleaded not to do anything until she came out. CPS came, and I, like, freaked out because I didn't want to get taken away, and we, like, cleaned up the living room as much as we could. I remember sitting on the porch talking to him a couple times, actually. I should not let him in. Mm -mm. I wonder why. These are not kids that make things up because they've got nothing better to do. They are the real deal. It was a pretty painful time for them. Mm -hmm. And I hope someday that you can come to Shantae and hug her and say, I am so sorry you had to live like that. And Dallas, I am so sorry. Because I hear a lot of Dallas was out running the streets as if he was a bad kid. He's not a bad kid. His friends really persuaded him. No, 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 no. He was running the streets because he could not live in this environment. He was a kid trying to survive. Linda has to really start feeling the impact of what has happened. She's got to work through this and not just push it aside. There is an opportunity for a new beginning and a, and a beginning that is emotionally healthy for you and physically safe for you. Uh -huh. And that, I think, is probably the final message. It is critical, Linda, that you ask for help when you need it. I've never actually, like, confronted my grandma about, like, our living conditions. Now that I've let everything out, I've been healing, but, like, this is the ending. Like, my wound is closing. <laughs> you know, normally, we like to take the family through the house to show what we've done. And in this case, we have to stay outside. There's caution tape. We're not crossing it. And we're having our meeting outside. It's the final piece of the day. It looks like we're at the final chapter of this particular project of our work together. Mm -hmm. Dr. Zazio and I have put together an organizing plan specifically for you, Kristen, to move forward. So I'm going to hand this out. And I want all of us to just run through it because we have resources ready for you. Dr. Zazio and I put together an entire list, getting the family in place with the proper steps in order on how to go forward. One of the things that we are gonna offer you is therapy. Because mm -hmm. that's a big missing piece. That's, that's one of the biggest things that led to this problem is not getting help and not being able to ask for help. I've started to research a therapist that Linda can access so that she can continue this dialogue about what has led to this horrific horde and this house being condemned. Appreciate every one of you. God bless every one of you and may good things come to everyone.
Well, okay. and you, you as well. Yes. Thank and you, you, Kristen and Shate. I wanted some change here, and I don't think I could have done it without help. Everyone done a wonderful job. I love that house. A lot of memories in it. You gonna be okay? So heartbreaking. I know. Just for the best, though. I just have to, you know, move on and start fresh. New beginning. Yes. When I first walked into Linda's house, my intuition said that this was an open and shut case. Tree branches were coming in from the outside into the dining room, and the inside of the house was just pure squalor. And the stairs going up to the second floor had actually become separated from the rest of the house. There was just danger everywhere. You know, I think initially I was secretly angry because I knew Linda's daughter, Kristen, grew up in that house. Linda, although mentally unwell, was actually kind to me. And she did take on the oversight of her grandkids because her daughter, Kristen, went to prison for a really long period of time. The good intentions were there for Linda, but she just wasn't healthy enough to follow through with her responsibilities. When Linda's two grandkids explain to me what they saw while living there, up comes this mama bear in me who wants to protect those kids. Yeah, as an organizer, my job is to clear the hoard, but as a loving human, it is always with the family who's been impacted. And Kristen wasn't aware any of this had happened to her kids, and I could just see Kristen begin to just seethe with anger. And at that point, she needed a mom to hug her and tell her it would be okay. And you know, that is something I can do. And it's something I want to do. Whenever we have to put on a full hazmat suit, you know it's bad inside. And let me just take a moment to talk about those lovely, stylish, and slimming hazmat suits. They are a pain to get into. First, you take your shoes off. Then you put your suit on. Then the shoes come back on. Gloves come on, masks come on. And then there's a technical problem with audio or camera. Okay, so we stop and we wait. And then the family says, okay, since we're waiting, I might as well have a cigarette. Or I'm gonna go to the restroom. Suit comes off, <laughs> gloves come off, masks come off. Oh, but the cameras are ready. Where's the family? No, they're not back yet. Okay, we're still waiting. And then finally, Gloves on, masks on, zip the suit up, and we're ready to go. But you know what? All of that takes an extra 12 minutes per person every time we have to suit up. And usually that's twice a day. So if you take something as simple as 30 minutes of time lost per day times 10 people, you're looking at five hours lost per day. And my commitment to time management is always on overdrive when it comes to handling our time on these hoarding projects. During the clear out, we shoveled tons of trash and poo from that first floor. And by the way, I think it's really sad when we have to clean living room floors with a shovel. I mean, what does that say about our society? And obviously, I had concerns about that and also as we made our way up to the second floor because there were holes in the stairs and the staircase was separating from the rest of the house, as I mentioned before. And it was our hope that we could clear all of the heavy, heavy bins and boxes from that second floor and bring it down and provide relief to the floor up above and the ceiling below. My organizing crew created a chain to pass down the bins and the boxes down those stairs. 
Yet I kept seeing the stairs give way with each of the passing boxes. So I thought at one point I was actually leaning against, you know, a wall in the upstairs bedroom and the whole wall bent away from the house. And this confirmed what I thought from the very beginning of the project, that this house would need to be condemned. This is not news I like to deliver. By nature, I'm a happy, forward-thinking person, but our jobs are to protect the hoarders and their families and tell them the truth. So we filed out of that house immediately, and I called my colleague on the show, you know him, Corey Chalmers, to verify our findings. I remember watching her from a distance as she sat there with her granddaughter, and Linda was in her wheelchair, and they were just staring at the house. It was first hoarded, and now it's boarded, and was just enveloped with caution tape. Not at all what we wanted for an outcome yet. In the end, the frightening severity of this case spurred Linda and her whole family to go to any length to make the home habitable and organized for Linda. And by the way, speaking of getting it organized, if you're interested in my free class on how to become a professional organizer, visit www.bossorganizer.com. Now, let's watch the next episode. The trash is literally three feet high. And I'm not talking about clutter. I'm talking about garbage. What the hell happened here? This is disgusting. We came across a scene in there in that bathroom that we just had to walk away from. I think we got a creature over here. Do you think that's a common event that people have dead cats in their houses? How could I have grown up been a teenager living in this? It's nasty. It's not sanitary. But if you clean it, it'll be OK. Oh, my god. I'm tired of seeing I live like this. I'm Augustine, I'm 68. I used to be neat and, and orderly, but not anymore. I'm Jason, I'm 28 years old. Uh, I'm Augustine's son. I'm very open about the fact that my mother is a hoarder and then I grew up in squalor. My mother chose garbage over being able to raise her son. My name is Susan, and I am Augustine's daughter. When I was growing up, the house was cluttered, but it wasn't filthy. It was nothing like it is now at all. There are rooms where the trash is literally probably three feet high. And I'm not talking about clutter. I'm talking about garbage. I mean, there is dog mess dried into the carpet and stuff. And it's just absolutely disgusting. It smells horrible. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but you don't want to go in there. At this point, she has no gas. And for that reason, she has no hot water. Her stove is not hooked up. She can't wash and dry clothes. Like I said, it was nothing like this. I mean, I was able to have friends over. It was nothing like this. When I was growing up, you never saw my mom without her hair done, without her makeup on. And you look at her now, 
She don't even have teeth and she doesn't care. And it's, it's just like two different people. The person I knew growing up and I guess the person really Jason knows. I don't have any memories of my mother's house being clean. Sometimes when I was, when I would be sleeping there, I would be awoken in the middle of the night by roaches crawling on me. I had to sleep with a fan on, because if I, if I didn't have the fan on, I could hear them crawling around in the, in the trash, and um, they would kind of frighten me and keep me up. The inside of the house stank, and so I stank, my clothes stank, and I got picked on a lot for that in elementary school. And I always knew. It's not like I grew up thinking that this was normal. I was used to it, but I knew that other people's houses weren't like that. I think he was in, um, towards the end of the school year when he was in eighth grade, I believe it was. And they did come to remove him from the house. They had about six police cars here. They had the police come up in here and take all kinds of pictures. The parish decided that it was too filthy for her dogs to live there and they took the dogs away. And then I guess if it was too filthy for the dogs, then it was definitely too filthy for a child. It hurt. When they took him away, I just felt like they took everything away from me. Just like when they took all my dogs away. So my mom came to me one day and asked if Jason could stay with me for a few days. And he lived with me for 10 years. My sister was a 20-something single person with a career and everything, and suddenly she has to raise a teenager. All that time, every now and then, she would say she bought something for Jason's room, which I thought she meant at my house, which she meant at her house for when he came home but she didn't clean up anything in order to get her son back. I mean, how hard can it be just to not fill your house with garbage? Because that was her child, and she should have cared more about him than anything else. My mom didn't set out to, to ruin my life. It's just something that happened to her. It's something that's going on in her brain that is not even necessarily her fault. I could only speculate as to what that is. I know she didn't have a good relationship with her own mother. I was raised by a mother who hated me because she had me out of wedlock. In the 40s, that was a big disgrace. And she never let me forget it. All I ever heard when I was growing up is, you ruined my life by being born. I hate you. I should have given you away when you was a baby. Sometimes I feel like nobody loves me except my animals. I mean, Susan makes me feel like that a lot. <sighs> she doesn't think she does anything wrong. Susan throws everything away. She threw away all my Tupperware, some of my pots. Every problem she has is somebody else's fault with everything. She blames Jason's father on um, disease, I guess you want to call it, getting worse. When she got pregnant for Jason and told Jason's father she never saw him again. But Jason is 28 years old. It's time to get over this. There's the nosy neighbors. He's a hole. They trying to make me lose my house. You know, code enforcement's on her back because somebody called. Well, somebody called because there's a problem, and you need to take care of the problem. They hate me so much, they made them take my dogs away, cut my plants down. That's terrible to hate your neighbor that much. Her next door neighbors are not bad people. 
I think they're just tired because the yard is a mess too. They give you a warning, clean it up, everything's okay. But she does it. Then they take her to court and they'll threaten her with putting a lien on her house. I don't know what's gonna happen. My aunt can't help anymore, she has cancer and it's a job I cannot do by myself. I don't know. I don't, I have no idea. I know that um, with our personalities, we certainly can't live together. Now her, her health is failing and she's having more trouble getting around. One day she's gonna die the house is like this when she dies, we're gonna be the ones stuck with the mess. I don't wanna have to deal with this at the end of her life. I am packing my clothes to get ready to go to New Orleans. I don't know. I really don't know what to expect. I don't think I've been inside since 2005. I imagine that it's only accumulated since the last time I've been there. I'm a little stressed, actually. Just kind of can't wait for it all to be over. I'll see you later, kiddo. I'm hopeful, but I'm not, not overly optimistic. Skeptical optimist. I anticipate a lot of, a lot of drama from my mother. As cooperative as she says she's gonna be, I don't think it's gonna be that easy. Somebody seeing the home for the first time, I don't think they could, they could say anything. If they weren't prepared, Whatever somebody imagines, it's, it's much worse than that. And the only reaction is, is shock and silence. I don't like seeing my mother live in a situation like that. It would just make me feel better if I know she was living better. Hi, Augustine. Hi, come on in. It's Suzanne. You ready for me? I'm Suzanne Chabot. I'm a clinical psychologist, and I specialize in obsessive compulsive disorders. I thought maybe it would be good for you to show me around a little bit and uh, tell me what you well, have this here. this is my Chester drawer, which belongs in my bedroom. Uh -huh. Susan borrowed it, and when she brought it back, that's where she left it. Oh, boy. Augustine does blame people, and when you have a person who externalizes responsibility for there being a problem, um, then she's not going to really see why she really has to do anything about it. Tell me about this room, Augustine. Well, this used to be my master bedroom. Uh-huh. Where is the bed under all of this? <laughs> yeah. How would you like so to get rid of some of these clothes, Augustine? I wouldn't want to get rid of them. None of them? They're summer and winter clothes put together. Good ones, sir. And I, there's no sense in me picking mm -hmm. them up now because They've been there so long that they smell. I see, so, so I they would... i got to wash them again. You would need to wash, but do, do you have a washing machine? It's sitting on the porch. Uh-huh, it needs to be hooked up, right? Yeah. All right, now I want you to tell me some about your bathroom. Now, what's, <laughs> you told me there's a problem with the toilet? No, I didn't have any water. No water for how long? Six years. Six years. I didn't have no money for the plumber. And, and when it rains, the water still comes down into the bathrooms. Yeah, especially if it rains hard. Mm -hmm. I'm Dorothy Brenninger, and I'm a hoarding expert. This is definitely a level five hoarding situation. 
the floorboards are going, the ceiling is caving in, exposed wires are out, plumbing isn't there. <laughs> it's just really, really tough stuff. Your life is in this room mainly, huh? Yeah. Outside of it. Yeah, I live in this room. Yes. Do you ever wish you could go in the rest of the house? Yeah. Maybe we can help you with that, huh? Augustine's hoarding impacts so many people. Obviously, it impacts her the most because she's living there. But it also impacts all the family members, the neighbors, the city. Anyone who has anything to do with Augustine is receiving the impact of it. Hallelujah. Hello, Mother. Uh, look how tall you're getting. I think I've been the same height since last time you saw me. <laughs> well, I shrunk. That's I true. I shrunk two inches. I don't really feel a very close connection with my mother. We don't talk that much. So she doesn't really even know who I am. Well, I miss you. I miss you, too. I wish you'd come home to stay. Mm, that's not going to happen. Why? Because I have a life in Seattle. You could have one down here, too. No, not the life I want. It's too cold up there for me. Well, it's too hot down here for me. Mm-hmm. Well, we got a cool front. You feel it coming? Sort of. Sort of. I actually sat on that sofa at one point in my life. This is my mother. I don't know the story behind this picture, but it's been here my entire life. That's me. Produces no emotional reaction. All I remember is walking out of my room a million times and walking past here. That's it. Just a sequence of events, things that have happened. In this family, there are two children, and there are two different reactions. Jason is, is more contained and emotionally removed. Augustine gave me the impression that she feels that he People can over. handle it more than her daughter. It seems to me that out of the whole house, this is the last livable portion. That's kind of sad. Wow, I've slept in this bed. I wonder how old this pile is. Probably at least 10 years old. This is like a, an alluvial floodplain yeah? with layers and layers of deposits and geez, if you could just peel back the layers, you would go back in time. Well, this is worse than I remember. What the hell happened here? This is disgusting. I wonder if she uses this toilet. This, I have, I have no idea where this is from. I don't know what's going on here. It looks like it's mildew and rotting. Jeez Louise. How many years must it have taken for that to happen? How could a person let it get this bad? I guess, I guess I can kind of understand it. You just get, you get used to something and then little by little you keep getting used to it until one day you look around and you live in this and you don't really care. I really don't know what the solution to this is. I mean, I, I hate to say it like this, but there was a time in my life when my mother had emotions and there was a human being inside. And now, I just, I don't, I don't get my mother. I, I just don't know what's in there. 
If you have odors in your home that you're trying to eliminate, I usually recommend the following free do-it-yourself tips. Number one, open all the doors and windows. Yes, even in the winter. Just turn off the heat, make sure everyone is dressed properly, and air the space out for 30 minutes. Number two, if you have animals, be sure to change the litter box more than you've been doing and make it a cleaning commitment to react faster to dogs and cats who accidentally go on the floor. And if you're not able to do this yourself or you don't want to, enlist a neighborhood kid to help you out. Number three, take out your trash every two to three days. Four, cut lemons and leave them in a bowl in the kitchen for freshness. Five, sprinkle some cinnamon on pine cones and place them decoratively throughout the house. And six, dab a little almond or vanilla extract on a light bulb and the heat will spread a friendly scent throughout the house. Dealing with my mother uh, is going to be the hardest thing. We're not that close. We don't get along. So having to, to spend a couple days in her house is going to be hard. My greatest fear about this cleanup is that she'll get mad and tell everybody to leave. I don't know what'll happen to her if she doesn't allow this cleanup. Well, we're ready to start this morning. Look at all these people back here. Take mm -hmm. a look. Yeah. <laughs> you were worried about doing this because other people would have judgments about you, right? Mm -hmm. So instead of all that, who do you want people to see you as? A nice person. OK. Clean. OK. How do you handle trash? You throw it away. Got it. That doesn't necessarily mean that we have permission yet to throw it away. We just know that you are saying that that's probably what we're going to encounter, right? Will I don't you? want my bottles and my crochet. She threw away my crochet booties. What you need booties for? I sell them for $10 a piece. My mother and my sister, I don't think they like each other very much. Anything that means something to me, it don't mean nothing to you, you throw it away. You know, it's, it's more of an obligation than an emotional attachment. Why does it mean so much? Because I'm tired of seeing her live like this. Yeah. All right, so this is the family room. Jason. You used to live in here, huh? Yes. OK, it looks a lot different than when you lived here or not? Not too much. No, it was like this when you lived here. Yeah. Oh, gosh, OK. Augustine's teeth. There are actually two sets of teeth in here. But one of them she knows of for sure, and it's by the reclining chair. And she really, really wants them. Her teeth are somewhere, <laughs> OK? And, you know, I know people are going to say, hey, you're not really going to ask her to put her teeth back in, are you? But <laughs> the fact of the matter is she's dropped them in here many times and has put them in. We're going to disinfect them, but we want to find them. That's it. I can't even imagine how they would begin this. This is overwhelming. So, I mean, if it were up to me, I would just bulldoze it all and start over. This is hell. You're very courageous. Thank you. I don't feel courageous. Looking at this. Augustine is allowing lots of trash to be thrown away. She knows that people are taking things out. So there's a part of her that's giving permission. She believes that people are not here to hurt her. All right. So come on in and sit down. What you stepping on right here? 
What is that? A turncable. Oh, that's disgusting. How much it trash and garbage clean. has been on there? You want to eat off of that? You don't eat off of that. It turns the... the... I don't care. It's nasty. It's not sanitary. But if you clean it, it'll be okay. You have children who become codependent and are constantly trying to help the person who has the compulsive behavior. Should Susan care about this anymore? I think that that's probably been a concern for a very long time about what's safe. Don't pick something up that's out of this dirty. trash. Why, why don't you buy all the things that I had that you threw away? OK. This woman gets blamed for everything. I wonder why. Oh, because I must it? do it all. I must Got do it? it all. The big picture here is that for many, many years, Susan has tried to help, but you never, often you didn't view it as help. And from Susan's perspective, she spent a lot of her life trying to help, trying to care about you. Is there something you want to say at this point to your mom about being blamed for everything? It won't matter. OK. <sighs> You've got to pour it. I mean, look and at you this. See, when I'm breathing like this, you yell at me. Stop making that noise. I can't help it. I have asthma. Whatever your excuse you is. You, yeah, okay. No, I do it because you make that noise all the time. Because I can't help it. Because you're a drama queen. Yeah. OK, wait a second. Hello? Tell me this is it. Mark, grab him. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. I honestly didn't think I would find them, but if I could find the other half, that would be great. So this is one set. Okay, well, I think what I'm going to do is go get Augustine, so oh. nobody move. Augustine, <laughs> you found your teeth. Yeah. Don't put those in. But what good would they do without the bottom? Well, it's a start. This is the man who found your teeth. Oh, I hope you find the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> OK, one Mama. more time. Don't forget that part about thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. My mom should at least be acknowledging the, the things that these people are here doing for her. It's all my sister and I doing the acknowledging and the thanking. And my mom just kind of acts entitled. Found in there? What? A cat. A cat. So, how do you, Jason, what would be your uh, thought of how this died? Oh, good God. How couldn't, would this? Couldn't hazard a guess. How did it, how did it go unnoticed is the question. <laughs> we found a cat. <sighs> how do you think if your house had not been so cluttered, do you think you would have been aware of the cat in your house? Perhaps? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know the cat was in there. No, of course you didn't. Do you think that's a common event, that people have dead cats in their houses? No. And why do you think it happened in your house, other than that you went? I wasn't here. No, no. Why do you think that a dead cat existed in your house for so long? My mom does not seem to have any reaction to this, uh, no more than she reacts to anything else. I do not understand her. So can I just ask you that if you're going to have animals, that we keep a home where you know whether they're living or not living, OK? OK. Because you love animals, right? Right. And if you love animals and you want the world to know you as a woman who loves animals, mm -hmm. this isn't what's going to prove that. No. OK? So this is the last of the dead cats. OK. All right? You keep them living from here on out. OK. OK. I, I can't believe anybody could live this way. This is not a basement. This is not somebody's shed. This is somebody's house. I just can't believe this. This is the, the story of, of the last 16 years of this house. I mean, I bet you could, 
you j could just peel back the layers and you would know what was going on in the world at the time. What was going on in my mom's life. It's just, this is like an archeological record of the, the past decade and a half. My earliest memories are, are, is this. This is just what I've always known. See Jason when he was eight years old? I remember when I was a kid, I had some, some toys in here, and I used to have access to this, and uh, it got covered with stuff when I was very young, and I could never get into it, and I wanted to see if it was what I remembered in there. This probably hasn't been opened in 20 years, more than 20 years. I, I do actually vaguely remember this, which is weird. I wouldn't be surprised that if we spent a long enough time with Jason that would find out that his emotions are pretty intense, but that is probably one way that he took care of himself was to, to take a deep breath and try to develop a life for himself. People seem to be impressed that a guy like me can come out of this. Yeah, I mean, I, this isn't exactly how you, how you create normal human beings, you know what I mean? Oh, I think we got a creature over here. Oh, yeah? Let me see. Another cat. And I'm kind of, I'm curious, Susan, how old is this cat? I mean, this was at the bottom again. Is it 10 years? Very easily could be 10 years old. I need another glove or I would do it, but I'd like you to see if you can scoop the cat up and out. Oh, God. One thing I'm good got to say about her is she loves animals. My little calico. And I know she wouldn't deliberately hurt an animal, but of course she said some of them disappear and she can't find them. She don't know where they went. Well, they got lost in the junk and died. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh -uh. That's this is the only mom I've known. My 28 years of memory, this is how she's been. I'll put a plant in here. I think it's very likely that my mother will end up dying here in uh, a pile of, of trash, you know? probably be chewed on by critters before she's discovered. It's not gonna be pretty. This is worth something today. I mean, if it was up to me, you know, we could just raise the whole thing and be done with it and just put a completely new house here. If the parish comes in and condemns her house, I don't know what's gonna happen to her. I think this is my mother's last chance. I hope she realizes that. You won't let them make you feel better. You won't let things they become the past. They don't try to make you feel better. It, it's okay. Augustine, do you still feel love for her? And she always says things hurt my feelings, so it's nothing new. If you could say thank you. I've told her thank you a few times. Can you say it today? Thank you. For what? For helping me. That's Great. not what I want her. thanks for. I want to thank you just for taking care of your son which you have never done. They would have given him back to me if oh, I had yeah. the money for In a your lawyer. dreams. No, that's the law. Um, I don't know if, if, if the law would have allowed it, if I would have chosen to come it's back and law. live with you. It's the law. But the right thing happened. It was better for me well, to go and live with Susan. Well, I know because we didn't Susan. have air conditioning. No, that's not the only reason. <laughs> How could I have grown up, been a teenager, living in this. 
and had any kind of normal life and development. So I know it seems like we're off to a tough start, but actually this is the good clearing that we all need with one another to get the work and the clearing done inside. So let's go do that. Okay. It was so hard for me to see the pain in Susan's face. I think she just so desperately wants her mother to say, I did something wrong and it hurt my children and I'm sorry. Let's make an aisle here. And I'd like that chair to come on out. Thank you. You're not gonna throw my chair out, huh? No, honey. What did I say? We're taking the you furniture out. Them. Why? Augustine? Okay. Why am I taking the furniture out? So they can clean. Yes. <sighs> Do you trust me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Take Bucket. the barrel, uh -huh. everything, these, I know they're her dishes, but let's get them in okay. a bag or a box. She can have them later, because she is using them, okay? Just throw everything in whatever? No, that's garbage in the cans, that's stuff to save. How do I differentiate? Use your own discretion. You know what? She don't deserve this. I want this picture. Oh, unless you want it. No, you can have it. This is my granny, her mom. Your mama wants a baby doll on the bed. <laughs> I ain't seen a baby doll. It was on the bed in a box. I threw it away. It she wasn't. Wants it. it wasn't on the bed. It was over here, and it's Where's all it? disgusting and dirty. Oh. Oh, God. Tell I'll buy another one. <laughs> I get good things off the side of the road. Yeah. You'd be surprised what people throw away. Yeah. Susan, I want you to use a shovel, not your hands. I got gloves. I know, but it'll go faster. <laughs> you think? Well, I'm going to be happy when it's clean, but I know I'm going to miss a lot of things. Like all my crochet books and my gardening books, they threw all that away. Yeah. We got some. Toddler diapers. Jason, how old are you? 28. You don't need these anymore, do you? Well, you sometimes I get nervous. I do not understand why she saves what she saves. Or how she reaches those decisions. Your mother just said that the mattress and box spring can be thrown away. Hallelujah. All right? All right. So let the guys know they can haul it out. All right. Thank you. Oh, my God. As my grandmother, her mother, would have said, she made her bed, she's got to lie in it. I mean, it sounds callous, but our family has done more than their fair share. She's had her chance. And there really is nothing else to be done. This is horrible. How long has this been? Look at this. This is wire. Wire. Look at this. I mean, I don't know what to think. But yet, I'm sure she'd want to keep it. I don't know when's the last time she was even able to sleep in this room. You can't sleep in your own bed. How sad is that? I had some feeds in here. I don't, I don't know what to call it. I don't know what kind of a word you could put on this. I think it's way beyond hoarding. When people hoard, they lose a sense of what their environment's like. It could be hideous to someone else, and they don't even smell it. They don't even sense that it's disgusting. And so she doesn't smell a rotting cat. She doesn't smell the reek of feces and urine from animals. Her senses are different than ours, than other people's. I will not be back here to clean this up. I can promise you that. <sighs> There's no reason in the world anybody should live this way. <sighs> I don't need it. I had enough. <sighs> She's a pig. <sighs> and she doesn't care at all about anything. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the marathon. Are you? 
Don't forget to watch Hoarders on Sundays at 7 a.m. Eastern on A&E. Oh, and if you're interested in becoming a professional organizer like me, just visit www.bossorganizer.com and come to my free web class. Dear God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for putting us this lady in our way just to help her clean her house. Thank you, God, for thank this you. day. Thank Again. you. tablecloth on there Wouldn't with somebody nice? who helped clean before in the past that was they took it off listen it's it was pretty disgusting you know I that know. <laughs> nobody would eat on that table no matter what tablecloth or not Kind of peek in be over and uh, okay. I'll scooch down. Oh, don't worry about the toilet again. You don't have to do any of the cleaning. But everything that's in this bathroom, I want into two boxes, written bathroom, master bathroom. Okay. okay? Because this is, look at it, it is current stuff here. the scene in there in that bathroom that we just had to walk away from. It's hazardous, it's, it's bio waste, there's human excrement all over the bathroom. I'm told they're soiled underwear and the toilet bowl is full of feces. It's foul. I mean, it's like, it's like we're in another planet. We're not equipped to handle that. It's just something that I'm not real happy about the idea of getting there and I'm not going to. second time an outside crew has come to clean up the house. When I tried to go in and start cleaning up, I didn't know where to start. I'm glad the other people knew what to do. It's very important to have my house clean. My family won't get on me as much. a lot more emotional for me than all the others. You know, I care for my own mom, so I can see these adult children, Jason and Susan, so desperately want to care for their mom. I have more of a moral obligation to my mother than any kind of emotional attachment. I help her because it's the right thing to do, not because I get anything out of it. Oh my gosh, what is going on here? Well, I don't know where to come from. You felt bad about your other chair coming apart when we Well, I have a recliner in the bedroom. <laughs> well, we wanted to replace the chair that broke it. Uh, my, my understanding is that you all put, pooled your money together yes. and uh, bought it for her. They bought that for you out of their own pocket money. We chipped in for you. Thank you. We hope you like it. Yeah. We'll Let's put, put it in your place. Well, that is so great. Is that an amazing group of guys? Oops. All right, Miss Augustine, come try this thing out. Let's see if it works. <laughs> oh. 
How about that? Good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm gonna cry. It's nice to have somebody to care for you, to help you when you need help. Because I sure couldn't do it by myself. I want to say to all of y'all, thank y'all so much. Y'all went above and beyond anything that you needed to do. You didn't need to do anything. Thank you, guys. Y'all are all really, really good people. They've cleaned out just about every room. It actually smells good in there right now. <laughs> it's amazing. To think that you would relinquish control for people to go in and take out as much as they did really surprises me greatly. Tomorrow, I'm not sure I'm going to answer my phone if she calls. <laughs> I'm sure she's going to be looking for things that she won't be able to find, and she'll probably be upset. This positive feeling, this excitement about what has been done is going to turn into something negative. She will find one thing that someone threw away that was not supposed to be thrown away. Realistically, the only thing that I know would keep my mother from reverting back to her state of squalor would be regular visits from cleaning crews. I'd say the fact that we've got some aftercare going on does raise the odds. But I'd, I still think the odds are probably against us. I don't think anybody's going to come and help her clean up anymore. I mean, there's, there's not a whole lot that I can do being in Seattle. My sister says she's done. I think she's on her own. When it comes to a clear out, there is a certain order of tasks we must consider. That's before we ever get into the house, I have to consider, can we even get in and out of the doors? In Augustine's case, we need to have the overgrown trees and landscaping removed so we could access the house and move safely around the property. And many viewers don't really know how anxious we are to get started, yet sometimes there's just no electricity for our production team. You know, they need to light the inside of the home and change camera batteries. And for my organizing team, I have to make sure that we can walk into the house safely and easily without falling through rotted floorboards on the patio or have to fight major overgrowth when bringing out boxes and bins and appliances. I remember walking through this home and thinking this seems like Chernobyl like a blast went off in the home and it stayed this way for years. Furniture, clothing, magazines, and food mixed with the humidity of Louisiana had all made it so it disintegrated back to soil inside Augustine's house. Raccoons, rodents, and cats lived and died in that house and the walls were covered with roach feces. I walked around worrying about Augustine's respiratory health, as she was already using an inhaler daily to manage her asthma. And I actually worried about our team's health too. Speaking of health, I'm seeing I'm about 75 pounds heavier back in this episode. Mm-hmm. I had often wondered how I was any different than Augustine or any other hoarder that I had worked with because I was hoarding sugar and flour on my body the same way Augustine was hoarding stuff in her home. And it was just as destructive. I knew I had to change and I was sad that Augustine was unlikely to ever change. You know, this show taught me more about life than I ever realized. As we dug down through a three foot layer of disintegration in Augustine's living room, 
Yeah. While we were searching for her missing dentures, we unearthed an entire dead, flattened cat. Later, we found a second one. Dr. Chabot and I were totally horrified. Jason was perplexed. Susan was disgusted. And Augustine wasn't phased at all. 95% of what was in Augustine's house needed to be thrown out. It was nothing more than a shuck and chuck into the dumpsters. You know, I feel like every part of my job on the show is difficult. One of those aspects is when I'm asking my team members to clean up those bathrooms, which are hazardous. Sometimes they simply say, no, we can't do it. The visuals, the odors, the sting in their eyes can be unbearable. I get it. And yet, we want to clear the space so it can be repaired. This episode really reveals how adult children of hoarders make the incredible effort to care for their parents and the boundaries they must set for themselves to stay healthy, even if it means disengaging with their adult parent. Organizing is never really about the stuff. It's always about what's underneath it, whether it's a huge hoard or a cluttered-filled kitchen, but just like in any family home. And speaking of organizing, I'm often approached by people who want to go into the field of organizing. And if you're interested in becoming a professional organizer, I invite you to attend my free web class at www.bossorganizer.com. Now, let's jump into the next episode. We gotta make sense of this nonsense. Becky's the first tenant that has occupied 16 minutes. You like to manipulate everyone. You're... Oh, shut up. We're running out of time and you're going through trash. They're valuable. About as valuable as roadkill. I am so tired. So am I! Basically just looks kind of a hurricane came through the house. If I don't get the house cleaned up next time, you take me to jail. I'm going to get down to the courthouse and have her declared incompetent. Claire, come back. Claire, she was getting nervous. My name is Becky, and right now, I have too much stuff. I have all kinds of old pictures and plates, a lot of small things that are, that are family things, a lot of chairs, tables with different designs, some of which are very ornate. The thing is, I have also 500 boxes Everything I have is in the storage units. My name is Walter. I own the storage facility where Becky stores her belongings. Shoot. Becky's the first tenant that has occupied 16 units at one given time. I was behind, way behind in my, in my mortgage, and the, the bank, they actually took, took the house. My name is Ken, and Becky is my mom. We were kind of like her last resort of a place to live. I love my mom, but I don't love all those problems that come with it. My name is Michelle, and I am Becky's son's fiance. Ken and I have worked really hard to buy our town home and make it nice. When Becky moved in, the process kind of stopped because her, her stuff just overwhelmed everything. I'm driving them crazy because I brought too many things in. I have been going nuts over the way she has treated my house. 
She's been given an ultimatum already. Michelle has told her uh, you're gonna have to find a place to live and I don't know what she's gonna do because she's basically in debt for uh, $20,000 for uh, her storage units. I feel sorry for Becky, but uh, in the near future, if she's uh, still occupying units and not paying for them, then I would have to take a legal process and uh, have her evicted. I'm totally fed up with this hoarding bullshit. I, I hate it. It's, it's a constant memory for me of, of growing up in a house that was just, to me, filthy. Ken has too many bad memories of the house. I felt very at peace there. My father didn't like me. He didn't want me. I was sick one day, I had pneumonia, and he told me to get off the sofa, and my grandmother was there, and so my grandmother took me back to her home. I never went back to live with my mother. It was 5,000 square feet, 15 rooms, three-story brick, built in 1837. The house had so many interesting things in it, and so many of the things were family history. When I was growing up, you'd go in the attic and you'd find different things and like lots of old children's books and, you know, fairy tale books. I felt like I was a, a princess in a castle. The house I grew up in was always a problem with uh, things being cluttered and uh, having little paths and trails throughout the entire place and not wanting friends to come over. But it was not as messy as it became. I had two sons. The older one was Bill. It was Halloween about 22 years ago. And uh, Bill got angry with his girlfriend about something and he went out and got in his car and drove off. It was like one or two in the morning. He didn't get maybe a half a mile up the street. We, I was with my cousins and we heard the car crash up the street. He was dead, I, I knew he was dead. I didn't just lose my son, I lost my future. From the point of my brother's death to now, it was a downhill spiral for my mom. She just, she just quit fighting, you know. She kind of detached herself from people and always pushed people away. And uh, the hoarding became out of control. She'll hold on to tons of different things for uh, a feeling of a connection to a past. A lot of my, my things that are family things, it filled a gap. It's, it became my family, basically. And then, um, I don't know, it just got out of hand, got out of control. I love my mom, but still don't know where she's gonna go or what she's gonna do, but she's probably gonna lose everything and uh, be homeless. My name is Claire, and I'm a retired millwright. Now, as we approach the house, uh, I've left things go. It's not very nice. Uh, it's cluttered uh, with magazines and books. And I need to retrieve those things. I'm Dean, and I'm Claire's son. Police responded, came out, and he figured he had the legal right to, to bake her after. And he blamed me. He said, how can you let your mother live like this? He put me in the back of the squad car and took me to uh, Columbia Hospital. They told me at the hospital it was for alcoholics and drug addicts, and I did not fit that class and uh, they released me. I'm allowed to uh, return to my home each day. 
it clean and uh, feed my animals. Once I am uh, done cleaning, I must leave. For my mom to get back inside the house, the hole inside has to be cleaned up. Bushes have to be cut down. The pool needs to be cleaned out. Yesterday, I picked up a certified letter that stated, I have 10 days to clean up everything. If I don't get the house cleaned up, the next time he would take me to jail. I'm Denise, and I'm Dean's girlfriend. One of the neighbors has a nickname for her. They call her Slumdog Millionaire because she has a beautiful home with a pool and lives like she's in the slums. In 2008, we were laid off due to the recession. Dean is living with his girlfriend in the back of my home in a shed. It's hard living, hard doing laundry, hard keeping yourself clean. We have electricity back there, so we have a TV, we have uh, a hot pot. In the bathroom, I use a bucket. It's kind of like a chamber pot. I'm sick of living outside in the back with those conditions. Dean gets very upset when I do not clean the house. We end up to the point sometimes where we stand and cuss at each other. She's not some little old lady that you can push around. She's the one who does the pushing around. I do get angry when people throw away my things. I, I truly need them. My plan for the cleanup is to move back into the house. If my mom decides not to proceed, I'm gonna go down to the courthouse and have her declared incompetent to take care of herself. So one way or another, it's gonna get cleaned up. My mom's storage units are full of all the possessions that came out of her house. I don't really make it a habit to go down there. I, I can't deal with it. It's overwhelming. Hi, I'm Dr. Cutts. Yeah, I'm Becky. I'm Dr. David Cutts, and I specialize in obsessive compulsive disorder and specifically hoarding. I was evicted from my home a year ago, and all my possessions are in these storage units. I don't know where anything is, and it's, it's just I, it's something I can't manage on my own. I'm overwhelmed. Becky has a very complicated history. Neither of her parents really appreciated her or wanted her in the first place. Psychologically, she's stuck with the things that make her feel whole. And yet, these very things that she's holding on to are the very things that will create a much worse situation where she may find herself homeless and without anybody. Ugh. Wow. So now tell me what yeah. specifically is in this well, one. Well, this has my bedroom suit in it. You can see it, there was like five pieces. And um, you can see the ornate top to that. There's the cradle that I used with uh, both of my sons. This was a cherry bureau that came from the Michener side. That was my grandmother's family. And you grew up with these things? Oh, yeah, uh-huh. OK. This is my great, great grandparents. I can understand why Becky would hold, want to hold on to those things. It's really her only link to her family. Now, in, in terms of things that you want to keep versus things you'd mm -hmm. like to not keep, mm -hmm. if something's broken. It all depends. Like, this is just a piece of, of scrap wood. And right. people say, oh, trash, throw it out. It's like people. Just because something is broken, you don't always throw it away. But that's what people do with people. For Becky, not having the opportunity to, to feel loved and wanted early on it eventually led Becky to feel much more comfortable with inanimate objects rather than other human beings. This is an example of the way these movers pack things with boxes. Things are like broken and just, things were just totally thrown 
in total disrespect for any of my things. Anytime we try to speak with Becky about her hoarding, she very quickly diverts attention to other issues. For example, the fact that the movers broke some of her things or may have stolen some of her things. So you're now in a position where you have these 15 units, 16, 16 units, but the person who owns the facility is going to need to, to vacate those units. I understand. Well, event, it, it, yeah, because I haven't been, I haven't paid him. I mean, he had all the storage units that, that weren't even being used, so it, it isn't that I took business away from him. In order for her to resolve this crisis, she's going to have to get rid of things that virtually any of us would actually not give away, like family pictures and, and heirlooms and things like that, and that is incredibly daunting especially for someone who has a problem with hoarding. It's scary, it's very scary. It seems like I've approached things so many different ways, with kid gloves, with loving, with kindness. I guess it's just not within my knowledge to get her to be able to move past whatever it is that's hanging her up. Hi, Hi I'm Dr. Chabot. Hi, Dr. Chabot, how are you so today? so nice to meet you. I'm Dr. Suzanne Chabot, and I specialize in obsessive compulsive disorder and hoarding syndrome. Okay, so you're not supposed to be in the house, but is it okay if we go through the house to take a look? Yes, on a temporary situation. Claire could not go into the house. It's the objects in her house, like a monster that's taken over her life. Please be careful. I had to watch my balance everywhere that I walked, and yet my leader was someone who had to walk with a cane. You strike me as a very refined person, so I can imagine you in a lovely home. I believe that Claire had a life in which people viewed her as lovely. Things changed for her. It's like I was in another place mm -hmm. in space and time. If you go through repeated losses, people begin to numb. Wow, what a beautiful pool that must have been. Then she gets struck with an illness, Guillain-Barre, and this illness attacks the sheathing on the nerve cells. It's extremely painful. When I was in the hospital, I was in the tunnel of light for the second time in my life. But something pulled me back. I had too much to do. So who else is living here? My son and his girlfriend. Do you think he would be OK with us going over there? I don't know about that. Well, let's just go see. Dean. Yes? They would like you to come out. Hi. When I went to the shed to meet Dean and Denise, I was really surprised at what seemed to be a commitment to really help to make the house better. You would like her back home in a safe, clean, comfortable house. Mm -hmm. Who wouldn't want their mother there? Would you visit her? Oh, I'm going to be closer than that. What do you think? You'll move in? That's my intention. Okay. If, she, if she wants it there. Did you ask her? Hoarding in this case is a symptom. And whenever there's a symptom, you look at it and say, what purpose does it serve? Does she want to love deeply again and be close to people when they'll just go away? Maybe it's just too much. Let's take a moment to go over a few organizing tips for your storage unit if you have one. First of all, don't overload it. If you can't roll up that door easily or get inside to access the boxes or see your furniture, you probably have too much in it. Number two, store your items in a U shape around the outer walls of the storage unit, which allows you to kind of step inside and easily see all your bins and your boxes and your furniture. Number three, label your bins with general contents. Don't get too detailed. And always label on the sides of the boxes or bins, not on the top, because you have boxes on top. Number four, use letter-sized boxes with lids to store your items. 
if the boxes are too big, they're just too difficult to move and too heavy to lift. And finally, always have a light and a step stool with you when organizing your storage unit. And speaking of organizing, if you have a talent for it, I invite you to attend my free web class on how to become a professional organizer. Visit www.bossorganizer.com. Becky is at a point where she's essentially hit bottom and she needs to see that her life and her future outweighs the importance of these inanimate objects. Well, good morning. Good morning. Woo! I'm Dorothy Brenninger. I'm a professional organizing expert and I specialize in hoarding. We have a crisis here. We have two days and we've got 16 storage units. So that means we can do about eight a day or approximately one storage unit an hour if we're lucky. We've got so much to do. We have to work quickly and make strong decisions. Everybody ready? Yep. Yep. Are you okay? Yep. So let's go. Let's look at this. Keep the net. You want to keep these soaps. Yes. Look how small of a world this is. Always. Are we going to really be talking about soaps when we've got uh, 16 units to go? Containers. What are you doing with that one? This is a great cookie sheet. For whom? Me. Wait, come back okay, up here. Right. Talk to talk to a person rather than the stuff for a second. The most frustrating thing with, with Becky is her inability to recognize what's needed to be done to take care of the problem. If you pan down at what we have here, yes. this is more, That's this is what we, we need you for. Attention. Yeah. She's focused on little dolls and clothes. There are all these doll clothes. I keep them. Okay. Even though they're completely stained uh, and soiled. Some are and some aren't. And what are you planning on doing with the doll clothes? I can get good money for some of them. And she's not focusing on larger things like the antiques and the, the garden equipment and the larger things that'll actually help her out. Spending a lot of time talking about this instead of letting me go through some of this stuff. That's yeah, the but whole we're point. spending a right, lot of time on health. trash when we need to focus on things that are worth money okay. so you can live a great life. You're pissing me off. Just let me at least do this one box right now and see how long it takes me to do a couple boxes. My mom and Michelle, they don't really see eye to eye. They argue on a day-to-day -day basis. These were... Becky, we have three minutes. Okay, well... And we cannot come back to this area. Well, I have or to... Or I have to give up. Well, then I guess you're gonna have to give up. Okay, but. and then you will have to leave my house. Okay. I'm not going to be able to handle this. So yeah. this is well, all trash. I'm, but I haven't even looked through the rest of this But it stuff. doesn't matter. We're but. running out of time and you're <laughs> trash. How are we? No, this is what so, you say is trash. So here's an ice cream scoop. That goes with my dragons. What dragons? I have my wooden dragons. You do realize nothing is coming home with that us. That is going to Okay, goodwill. I get it. Okay, except that. Yes, I get it. That I'm goes asking, with my yes, dragon. Yes, I get it. Okay, don't I'm scream asking, at me. Well, listen to me. How can I help but listen to you? I said. I heard you. No, actually, you didn't, because I couldn't finish my sentence. <sighs> I'm going home. I can't get through to her. This is just the same game she's been playing forever. We can do this in five minutes. You sit there and you say yes, no, yes, no. This. Come on. Put it in the big box there. Learn Greek? No, put it down there. You're not keeping a car. Put it in there. No. No, why? Because. And you're keeping this? Can I throw it in the trash? I don't give a OK. It. Yeah, hi, Dorothy. Hi, sorry to interrupt, Walter. Watch, ah, watch it! Becky is only going through the trash. I'm gonna see what's in here, that's all. Pulling stuff off the truck. I'm gonna look at these plastic yeah, bags out, please. and see what's in them. 
is not allowing us to put anything into trash. Oh, no, they're, they're valuable. About as valuable as roadkill. 20 people rendered powerless. Look at everyone sitting there waiting for Right, you. I know. I want to try to get down there, but you're spending all this time. You haven't made but any effort. I'm waiting for you. Could I Im impose on you to come over and um, lay down the law with us because you're the man with the power? Let me head over there now. I'm about a half an hour away. This is real quick. Trash. Well, as quick as I'm making it. Okay. Well, I'm making it quick. Well, do you want that? Yes, I want that. Why? It's broken. Look. I can see. I'm what not blind. There's not. I'm going to stick it someplace. Where? Oops. Bend over. OK. I'm out of here. I'm done. Yep. Well, you're so pushy about it, Michelle. I have a poem written about my experiences with Claire. Old newspapers, as far as the eye can see. Claire's Cafe is a makeshift outdoor kitchen with a warm refrigerator that smells like a dead cat. This fridge house. I have heard some of her lines. poetry. Uh, I'm really not a big poetry fan. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Morning. We have a huge crew here. My name is Matt Paxton. I'm an extreme cleaning specialist. We have a lot to do. This is a unique situation where if you get into the government system and you don't comply with local code, then something that, that was a molehill does really become a mound. We're going to get rid of a bunch of these trees. We're going to get rid of a bunch of junk. We're going to move some cars. And then we got to go inside the house. Basically, just looks kind of a hurricane came through the house and they just never really got the ambition to fix it. We are gonna say yes, ma'am, the entire day to you, okay? There's a reason for that. We're gonna get you back in the habit of being respected. Everyone's gonna say yes, ma'am. It's not because you're old. You are old, but it's not because you're old, all right? It's because we, we appreciate you and respect you, all right? You ready to get going? Yep. All right, tell these guys. Let's go, guys. Yes, yes ma'am! <laughs> We had a backhoe. We had a couple repo guys came in and took cars real quick. Man, this is a big one. We had to bring in the squad for this one. Pool is pretty gross. All right, so here it is. This is the pool. Uh, that's not a pool. That's a, that's a pond. Keep those, please. Keep They're new. All right, man. That can go out. Yes, ma'am. Before lunch, Claire was able to really think about her decisions. No, throw it out. <laughs> You're doing fabulous. Unfortunately, when she thinks too much, it slows her down. But that's the way her brain works. Please don't let them take down too much. I mean, uh, the palmettos, don't uh, cut the every, palmettos. Here the unless lady. they're brown. Here's the, what they're doing is what brings the house to code. He's let this house go over 25 years, and we're seeing that today. That's yeah, I don't code. like that. Well, that's how it's supposed to be. We lost Claire at lunchtime. I don't know where she is. It's been about an hour and a half now. I got almost 30 people here ready to work, and I need to be respectful to Claire and let her have say in what's going on. But I'm paying 30 people by the hour to sit here and wait for Claire. The important thing is that Claire needs to manage her pain and discomfort, and she also has to stay aware so she can own her own decisions. Now, she did come back and looked more tired. She looked less aware. She was dozy. We found out about halfway through the day that her medication keeps her going till around 2. And we lost her. I mean, middle of a sentence, she just dropped. Walmart or Macy's or JC Penney. If her state is too altered, tomorrow might be a big shock for her. Is she going to really own that she made those decisions, or will she feel tricked? Claire, Claire, come back. Yeah. 
right, she's going to want to keep this, so I don't know where we're going to want to put Michelle has had to take on a lot of responsibilities that she's never asked for. So she's completely fed up and letting Becky have it. And that's completely understandable. You like to manipulate everyone. You oh, like to take Jesus. advantage of everyone. You never say sorry or thank you to anyone. I don't. I'm trying to make things fast because I can pick things out of a bag really fast. What are you going to do with this besides stick it up my as you already told me you're going to do? It's just an expression because you pissed me off, that's all. Well, you can get out of my house because you okay. pissed me off. Oh, all right. Look, I am so tired. So am I! Oh. I have a conference call. You know why? Because I have to make money for everyone to live, to pay your bills. Walter. Becky, I've lost my patience with you. And I'll tell you how it's going to work. If it's not done by tomorrow, All right. I'm going to serve legal papers against you. Sure. It's going to take 30 days. In sure. 30 days, I'm going to come cut your locks off. Yeah. Trucks are going to pull up here. Right. And everything's going to go on the top and in the trucks and out to the landfill. I'm not going to sort through one item. And okay. that's what's going to happen. Okay. I'm serious. I mean, because I've lost my... No, I'm, I'm serious. I, hey, I've been... I've been very patient with you. I, I tell you, you've been wonderful. I'm happy that Walter's um, doing what he needs to do. I mean, that's the bottom line. It's basically junk. You can't knock the guy. He's let her pretty much squat here for a year. Here, let me see it, please. What? Oh, that's a crash. Take that out of... I want that whole thing. You're really going against everything you uh, intended to do today. No, I'm not. I just thought I had the right. I don't know what's in these other big plastic bags. Well, we have can, the right that you determined you wanted the stuff to go in the trash, you and now you're taking no, stuff back. No, I never determined it. They put it here, and they said, quote, I could go through it before it went on the truck to decide. Well, if you keep going through and, the trash, you're not getting anywhere. Becky made her home right in front of the trash truck. There wasn't a way that we could get anything on the truck whatsoever. Look, instead of being a pain in the ass, would you just take How this down there? How am I being there? a pain in the ass would you when please I'm trying pick this to go through me? the process? Will you please pick up this box for me? And what if I say no, it's going on the track? No, then I'll carry it down myself. Sure you would. Well, it's right. getting to be She was protecting her no value items while everything else was sitting out. What we did was organize around her. The marbles, really? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Probably about twelve to eighteen hundred dollars in there in total. Yes. That whole bin is in pretty rough shape. If there's fifty to hundred bucks in there, I'd probably be surprised. You could have another 50 75 bucks in here depends on what you find inside some of these boxes it, it's all saleable at a low level as long as one's expectations are equal parts money and gone mom we don't have time to go through the trash twice uh, okay well let's everybody's gone through the trash twice they've I gone haven't... through it once to get it here and then you're going through it again. Uh, one and one makes two. Put we got to make right sense here. of this nonsense. It's not coming okay. to our place one way. OK. One way. Yeah, let's yeah, and, and deal with that. Just... At least he didn't say I could walk out in the street and try to get hit by a bus. I have a concern about this family. <laughs> when I'm around them, it's if everybody's floating. I know that for Claire, it's her illness. It's the level of medication she has to take to deal with her pain. Claire, Claire, come back. Claire. Claire is out of it, man. She took that medicine at lunch, and boom, I mean, it was a switch. We can't go in and clean the house and remove items with someone that is medically not aware. Denise, can we invade your privacy a little bit? Denise was very instrumental 
and trying to have two okay. agendas met. I won't take much of your time. One was to have the house cleared so she would have a place to live, and the other was to bring health to Claire. I believe once she got it kicked in motion, she pulled back. Why are you staying away today? Uh, a friend of mine called up, and uh, I, I did receive this job from her several weeks ago uh -huh. to do a portrait. She's bringing over the money, and we need the money. Middle of the day, she came out. She goes, I've got an art job to do today. Well, that, the hell does that mean? Are Absolutely. you going to be able to help out tomorrow? Absolutely. Absolutely. OK. Absolutely. I'm just going to chill out, get my head together, you know, do a little meditation, and tomorrow I should be back on track. I put that out into the universe. This whole family has just gotten into this uh, lazy Sunday syndrome, and they just, they've been coasting for 12 years. room I must keep. What about this tarp here? Take it. Take it. Mm, don't bring any cockroaches here. Mm, get rid of it. All right, so real quick, I want to check in to make sure our goal is still to empty the garage to get the DeLorean in. Uh-huh. Is the DeLorean more important than 80% of that stuff? Sure. Hey, Junk, let's go. Let's get the guys, let's get everybody in here. Let's get going. Claire saw a lot of things put into the truck and she was getting anxious, nervous. It was so important for her to say, wait. There's a few things that I want to keep. She's looking in the truck. Peeking in. She snuck a few items while I was coming up to talk to her. For insurance purposes, you're not allowed to go in that truck. Well, I wasn't in the truck. Okay, you know what I mean now? Like once, like I'm not even allowed to cross this. Truck. I'm okay. Time out. I gotta tell you, man, she is a tough woman. She popped right up. She brushed it off. I tripped over a root. Everybody's exhausted. Everybody's frustrated. We're not even close to be done with the outside, more or less getting into the inside. With the amount of work we got to do tomorrow, I'm not very hopeful. Hey, I hope you're enjoying the marathon. Are you? Don't forget to watch Hoarders on Sundays at 7 a.m. Eastern on A&E. Oh, and if you're interested in becoming a professional organizer like me, just visit www.bossorganizer.com and come to my free web class. You need to do about 86 boxes an hour today in order to finish. I'm looking to leave the country. What's more important, sanity or stuff? If we don't do this, then you won't have that I chance I feel like anymore. I'm getting raped right now, I'll tell you. Well, I bet well, that's I how it like feels. I felt sure. actually, when I begged you not to bring right. stuff, and you did. Right. It mm -hmm. totally stinks. Right. I know exactly me. how you feel. We got to get going. Where are you we going? We match up puzzle pieces We got to right get now. going to moving to, to get this Okay. Everything's organized. There. Where does this go? Yeah, yeah, this is, go. All right, you can take that. What about this? OK, that's Blue Willow. You can take that whole set. Antique? Yep. All right, keep this white one. OK, what about this? That can go. Antique? Yeah, well, they go with the antique show. Yeah. Everything under it is in antique. Oh, my god. Nobody's asking about these. This is not going. What th is it? What are you going to do after 30 days with all this stuff? We don't have time for this. Just get no, off my case. No, we don't have time for this. Get off my No, case. we don't have time for this. Get we have 500 boxes. No. You're wasting everybody's time. OK, Michelle. All right, I'm pulling all the boxes out, and they're going somewhere. Oh, shut up. 
I'm not going to waste my time anymore. What Becky's doing right now is completely deflecting making decisions. You're worried about the most piddly That's great. She is not addressing the need at hand. I just feel very exhausted right now. It's a faster clip than I'm able to keep up with. You see what they're doing down here? You've got to go through 500 boxes of and do it fast. I'm being treated like I'm stupid. Set all that bull down. I'm going to right over here. All right, Becky, we have all these boxes to sort, so I come on. Hear you. And I'm not used to that because I'm not stupid. She shouldn't even be allowed to have a say. What in the world? A box within a box. Why would anybody keep stuff like this? Becky, yeah. I have Walter here. Rebecca, Walter. hello. There's a pile of trash next to the office. Right, yes. That has to go. That right. entire pile cannot be left here. No. At, I know. at end of day. Right. Always, so. we're all on the same page here. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Here's what we accomplished today. We went from 16 storage units down to four. Everybody did their best. But you know what? Oh, good. There was a big roadblock, oh, and her name stop. was Becky. I don't know that I'm necessarily trying to keep too much, because some things I'm keeping, the boxes and stuff, because I haven't gone through them yet. But at the end of the day, there's still many problems. My house is still being hoarded. She still owes Walter a lot of money, and it's a shame. I don't think it'll ever change. I didn't get out of it what I thought we would. I'll never be back at these units. I'm done. I'm totally done. I'm incredibly concerned about Becky's relationship with her son and Michelle. The very thing that's at the heart of their conflict is still there. Nothing's been resolved. Becky didn't learn anything from this at all. Because of time, mm -hmm. we're really going to have to push pretty quick through here and make more sweeping decisions. We're going to focus straight ahead and to the left. Mm -hmm. And remember, we're always looking for items to show her what we've got. But my bra here. Thank you. Now the stuff's coming out of the house. She's getting nervous. Claire's just worried about everything being thrown away. And yeah, I would be, because a lot is getting thrown away. This is a very real, real situation. We lose all these guys today. We have a half a day, really. We have six hours. I picked out the one thing I knew that Dean wanted, these five weed whackers. And I let Claire know. I said, look, you let Dean know. I'm throwing these away right now. Dean? Yo, Dean. What do you want to do with those weed whackers? They're ready to throw them away. What do you want? Not in five minutes, not in 10 minutes. These are going in the trash unless he wants them. Immediately, Dean shows up. Where are the weed whackers at, Mom? He's pissed. Let him throw the yeah, how's that? We're happy to save them if you want them. You just need to tell us. Here they are, Dean. Here they are. Throw them out. Throw them out. If that's what you're going to get every day, every hour by hour, you don't know what's going to happen, why would we want the house to be totally clean so that they both could move into the house with you? Mm -hmm. If they're going to yell and scream at you. That's not going to happen for you. Am I going to move in there? I don't know. If my mom will have me, yeah, I'd like to stay close with her. 
I don't think it would be good for you. Whether you, you feel like you should or shouldn't do it, I just don't think it would be good for you. What do you think? Oh, boy. A lot of stuff is missing. You're right. We have put a Band-Aid on a broken leg. It, it, this is not going to go away. Right now, I feel like you'd probably rather go stay at a friend's house than stay here. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Even with all the trash out, mm -hmm. it still may be condemned. We don't know. I believe I will have the property in order by the time they plan the inspections. What do you think? <laughs> uh, wow. What do you think so far? I'm disappointed that my mom couldn't move back in. I'm really excited because I just sold a portrait, so unfortunately I wasn't uh, able to be as involved as I would have, li have liked to have been. Claire and Dean both made it clear that we love each other. We say that to each other every day. But what is love? Love requires work. That love that takes courage and hard work to get in there, deal with the problem, clean up the house, that's where you see love manifested in real life. unit industry is a $38 billion business. People like Becky keep these places in business. Now it's one thing to have a storage unit or two and access what you need when you need it, but it's totally different ball game when you are facing homelessness and no longer have the money to pay for your 16 storage units in which you're renting. Yeah. It's my job to help Becky clear these storage units and encourage her to sell her stuff so she can have enough money to get an apartment. I remember reviewing each storage unit and creating a timeline for achieving the goal of organizing, sorting, and selling Becky's stuff. Most hoarders and their family members fail to realize how long it really takes to manage a project like this. And it's my job to help make that clear for them. I do this by doubling or tripling the length of time they think it will take to do the work. In this episode, it's hard to watch Ken struggle between these two overpowering women. He has his fiery fiance, Michelle, on one side and his sarcastic mom, Becky, on the other. And both are so strong-willed, and they both did exactly what they wanted to do separate from one another. Now, neither one of them liked the other's plan, and they simply worked at odds for the entire project. For people who hoard, renting storage units can be dangerous. The items stored are usually never easily retrieved and sometimes never retrieved. And thousands and thousands of dollars are lost over time. Look, to rent 16 storage units at 150 bucks a month for a year, you would be spending almost $30,000 a year times 10 years, which is often the case with hoarders. That's well over a quarter of a million dollars in storage unit payments. Well, that's it for right now. I hope you enjoyed the marathon. And don't forget to watch Hoarders on Sundays at 7 a.m. Eastern on A&E. Oh, and if you're interested in becoming a professional organizer like me, visit www.bossorganizer.com to join my free web class. See you next time. Hi, thanks for being a fan of Hoarders. And subscribe to A&E for more videos and click the links around me to watch more.